Tonight, Conference USA football returns to Ruston, Louisiana, as the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs meet the pass-happy HBU Huskies out of the Southland Conference. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Joe I.A. Stadium with Chris Mikoski. I'm Len Rollins. Chris, this is an intriguing matchup, and we no doubt will see a lot of scoreboard changes. Now, we saw what Louisiana Tech did last week at Southern Miss. Two weeks ago, it was Houston Baptist getting within a late two-point conversion of tying Texas Tech in Lubbock. The Huskies certainly have the Bulldogs' attention. Well, indeed they do. You know, there's nothing normal about this so-called new normal in college athletics. Here we are in the final weekend of September. This is only the second game of the season for the Bulldogs. And for the Huskies, it's the penultimate game of the year in this truncated schedule. Tech ended its 2019 with a shutout win over the Miami Hurricanes down the road in Shreveport. Then after the bizarre offseason, the opener versus Baylor was canceled after a COVID-19 outbreak here in Ruston, largely due to Hurricane Laura hitting the city. Because that Baylor game was lost, that meant the entire non-conference schedule was overhauled for the Bulldogs. Well, Chris, maybe the delay was worth it because Louisiana Tech a week ago finished in scintillating fashion with a last-second victory in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Down 17 points at one point late in this ball game, Lynn, but Louisiana Tech wins it. Luke Anthony hitting Griffin Abair, and after further review, Abair did get that foot in bounds. Tech starts its season 1-0. and oh. Well, we have a small sample size to show you, but let's compare some numbers between tonight's opponents. The biggest numbers that really hit you, Lynn, are on the HBU offensive side, specifically the passing yards. Tonight we'll see Bailey Zappi on display. He broke his own school record against Texas Tech, 567 yards and four scores versus the Red Raiders. Well, tonight here in Ruston, there's the potential for a lot of points. We hope you'll stay with us right here on ESPN3. The Bulldogs, the Huskies, next from Ruston. We welcome you back to Ruston, Louisiana. Chris Mikoski, Lynn Rollins with you as Louisiana Tech hosts a football game for the first time in this season. Lots of sunshine here in the early evening of Ruston, Louisiana. A beautiful evening unfolding. Conditions should be favorable, and we are going to see three quarterbacks, actually, who can throw the football very well. There will be a pair of signal callers, Luke Anthony and Aaron Allen, for the uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And, of course, a guy already with a national reputation after last season, Bailey Zappi. As you see, Vic Sheely. The first and only head coach in Houston Baptist history actually took the program over before they had a single ball or jersey there on campus in Houston. This is the eighth season of football for HBU. They won five games for the first time a year ago. And we are set for the kickoff. Houston Baptist won the toss but deferred its choice until the second half and this kick is deep into the end zone Louisiana Tech will put its offense on the field on its home field for the first time this year there's Skip Holtz also in his eighth season as Louisiana Tech head coach and his postseason record over the last six years has been unblemished in fact that six game bowl winning streak for Louisiana Tech one of the very best in the country that's an elite group that has won six or more bowl games. And able to pick up the 14 to nothing victory over an ACC opponent in the Miami Hurricanes. And what a great day that was at Independence Stadium last December. Luke Anthony will take the first snap, an industrial organizational psychology major in graduate school at Louisiana Tech. This may be a broken play, and Anthony is dragged down at the line of scrimmage. Anthony coming off a week where he was awarded the Manning Star of the Week Award and also an honorable mention for the Earl Camber Tyler Rose Player of the Week all over the country, people recognizing what kind of performance he had in Hattiesburg. Second and nine and an empty backfield. There is pressure coming. Anthony is able to elude it and now throws it at the last moment, and the catch is made at the 32-yard line. That one hauled in by Isaiah Graham. Isaiah Graham 
out of nearby Bastrop, started his career at TCU, and he was a safety valve receiver after the scramble by Anthony. So third and makeable, the line to make is the 35, third and three for the Bulldogs. Two protectors in the backfield this time. Anthony under pressure again, tries to set up the screen and dumps it off into a pile of bodies that hits the turf. So that's pressure early, Chris, by HBU. They've been able to get to the quarterback. Now really doing a really good job penetrating the line and certainly with the men up front, Louisiana Tech has the bulk, has the skill, but right now HBU showing a lot of heart finding their way to Luke Anthony. Jareth Stearns is back to receive this punt. He's waiting at the 20-yard line. There is a flag down. The kick turns over, and Stearns makes the fair catch at the 28. But there is a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. If this is against HBU, it's going to extend the first possession for Louisiana Tech. Offsides, defense number. Offsides in the first down, Louisiana Tech. That's a five-yard penalty on fourth and three, and Louisiana Tech will put its offense back on the field with possession at the 32-yard line. What a huge mistake this could end up being for HBU. They have a great defensive series to start this ball game and a chance for Bailey Zappi to get the ball in hand and punch one in before Louisiana Tech has an opportunity to do so. Instead, your defense has to return to the field and go at it again first and ten for Tech. And your point is well made because it played out. It looked like it was going to play out exactly the way HBU wanted it by getting the possession back. However, Louisiana Tech on the penalty has the first down at the 37. A delayed handoff goes to Justin Henderson, and he doesn't find much at the line of scrimmage. They'll mark him down with no gain. Second and 10, Henderson out of Lake Wales, Florida, by way of Coffeyville Community College. And he is one of the better running backs in Conference USA, along with his teammate Israel Tucker. And we'll also see Greg Garner, who had a fine fourth quarter in that comeback victory against Southern Mississippi. Yeah, Bulldogs spread the wealth really well last week. Three runners, all of them that you mentioned, with 40-plus yards against USM. Henderson tries it again, and HBU stacks it up for a minimal gain, a couple maybe, out to the 39-yard line. Chris, it's very early, but I've been impressed with the tenacity and the toughness of this HBU defense, especially up front. Oh, absolutely. I, th I think they're surprising everybody who's watching the game tonight who's familiar with HBU. They obviously were able to hold Texas Tech at bay for a lot of the time two weeks ago, but you certainly don't expect Louisiana Tech's offensive line to get beat so often. The line to make for a first down is the 47. That pass is on the way, caught, and then fumbled backward and picked up by Houston Baptist. It's going the other way, and a saving tackle is made near the 15-yard line. All sorts of things happening on that play, and Houston Baptist with Isaiah Cash coming up with the loose football has a first down deep in Louisiana Tech territory. Isaiah Cash, part of that young secondary for HBU, and you see I think he got a couple of steps in, made a football move, so that will be a catch. Officials will likely take the time to get another look at it. Signaling and that right indeed now, is that going to be, be the, the case, case yes. Chris. As, uh, looked like Graham was in possession of the football legally before it came out and was recovered by Isaiah Cash. And officials now saying the call is incomplete. So they will bring the, t the Tech offense back on the field, the HBU defense, still awaiting the official review to be initiated. Hasn't happened yet. So two first quarter breaks going Louisiana Tech's way. One of them extended the drive. The second one was ruled against HBU on a fumble or catch. It was, ru it was ruled an incompletion. And now the punt is away. This one is a short one. There is contact. The ball is loose at the 33-yard line. And there is a pileup. 
And the officials have not yet indicated where possession will be long. You talked about Tech already getting two huge breaks. This might be the third. It is Tech ball. Well, Houston Baptist must be thinking, what do we need to do here to catch a break in the first quarter? We have played only a couple of minutes. And Louisiana Tech has had good fortune. Let's see if the Bulldogs can turn this field position into a score as Stearns was unable to hold on to the football. And there was a lot of bumping as the, as the punt settled into his arms. HBU attempting to call for the fair catch, but doing it in heavy, heavy traffic. Stearns may have been well advised to let that one fall to the turf and have Tech simply down it. Played, was risky on that one, and ended up going in Tech's favor. First and ten for the Bulldogs. Anthony will throw on first down. He's got a pocket from which to throw. Now we'll dump it off at the last moment, and it is incomplete. He threw it into traffic, trying to get it into Graham, but... There wasn't much available to him. Second and ten for the Bulldogs. Anthony actually played his earlier career in the Southland Conference. He was a fine quarterback for Abilene Christian. He finished his eligibility there and has come to Louisiana Tech for his final year in grad school here. Anthony looks, throws to the outside shoulder, but that one is beyond the reach of Adrian Hardy. Hardy is a senior, a three-year letter winner out of Houston, and a go-to guy over the course of his career. Well, for Anthony, you mentioned that he played at Abilene Christian. Not only did he play there, go to school there, he was playing on a field that was named after his family, a $30 million donation to ACU from the Anthony family, 15 of that going to the football stadium. So he was playing at Anthony Field at Wildcat Stadium. Luke Anthony pulls it down, now throws it late, and it is incomplete. Anthony in his career has played a couple of times against HBU, and he's had two big ball games. Huge. He threw for 280 yards last year against HBU, playing for the Abilene Christian Wildcats. Three touchdowns resulted in a 45-20 win. The year before that, 247 yards, and again, three touchdowns, a 38-13 Wildcat victory. Left-footed kicker Jacob Barnes, who also is the punter, will attempt a 51-yard field goal from the far hash mark. The kick is away, and it is good. Jacob Barnes already shining in the early part of the season. He had a huge game punting and place kicking a week ago, and he booms a 51-yarder to get the Bulldogs on the scoreboard. 11.59 remains in the first quarter. Louisiana Tech 3, HBU nothing. mind and your soul are directed in the right way. The beauty of the relationship that we have with Origin is that we're able to couple that passion with some resources. 35,000 meals cooked out of, if you looked at that kitchen right behind us over here, one lady primarily <laughs> doing a lot of the work. Well, it's just amazing what you can do when your heart your mind and your soul are directed in the right way. The beauty of the relationship that we have with Origin is that we're able to couple that passion with some resources. 35,000 meals cooked out of, if you looked at that kitchen right behind us over here, one lady primarily doing a lot of the work. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. 
Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We're committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. When you were younger, what dreams did your future hold? Going to space? 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Saving lives? Sharing knowledge? Launching a business? Creating timeless art? No matter your dreams, you can chase them here. You belong at Louisiana Tech. Back to Ruston, Louisiana. After a fits and starts. Early part of this game offensively. Louisiana Tech has taken a 3-0 lead on a long field goal by Jacob Barnes, a 51-yarder. Jacob Barnes is the younger brother of Jonathan Barnes, who holds many of the Bulldog kicking records. So here's a guy who's following his outstanding brother, already starting a legacy early here as a Bulldog. Yeah, plenty of family tradition here in Ruston. And Lynn, for HBU to only be down 3 to nothing after those three breaks, went against them here in the first quarter. I think they have to feel very, very fortunate. And offsides gave Louisiana Tech a fresh set of downs when they were trying to punt it back to HBU. An interception ended up being called an incomplete pass. And then the muffed punt as Louisiana Tech punted it for a second time. And HBU, again, only down three to nothing. And Bailey Zappi will get the ball in his hands for the first time. A Canadian, Gabe Shimienitz, Kicks it through the end zone. And Houston Baptist puts its offense on the field. Trailing 3-0. HBU will play only one more game before calling it a day here in this uh, very odd season. It will not participate in the Southland Conference spring schedule, which will start in late February. In fact, four teams out of the Southland Conference elected to play games this fall and they will be not part of the mix in a seven-team chase for the championship that starts in February for the Southland Conference if all goes well. Houston Baptist won't run the ball much tonight, but the first run off to the left side is an effective one, and we'll see how much the uh, running game comes into play. Zappi, of course, is just tremendous throwing the football. Flags go down and we'll sort this out. That false start will cost five yards. Lynn, one thing with Zappi that is truly remarkable in an air raid offense, when you're zipping the ball around all night long, typically you're used to making mistakes. You just kind of take it as par for the course that you'll throw a few interceptions in there. Zappi has thrown 111 passes with no interceptions. He slings this one out on the wide receiver screen and pretty good yardage picked up on that play. Ian Beek was on the receiving end. Houston Baptist thought it was going to get the return of Dreshawn Miniweather, who was a really nice running back for them last year. He missed four games with a thumb injury, but uh, still had well over 700 yards rushing in eight games and uh, averaged nearly seven yards per attempt. Zappi. Put some air under this one, sends it downfield, and a catch is made at the 35-yard line. Some tremendous fighting for the football, but it was Josh Stearns hauling in his eighth catch of the season, and when he goes downfield, he really gets downfield. He's averaging over 35 yards a catch. He knows how to fight the, for the ball because he had probably to fight for everything in his, in his life. The youngest of six brothers. Ben Ratzliff is on the receiving end of that slant. Zappi starting to heat it up now. Good for eight on that reception. Second and two from just outside the red zone. 
Zappi a year ago, 35 touchdown passes, 15 interceptions. He led FCS passers with 357 completion yards per game, or 357 completions, and was number two in the country at 317 and a half yards passing per game. Again, some early movement. False start. Offense number two. Five-yard penalty. Second down. You know, Chris, nobody likes those types of penalties. Most often it's just an inattentive penalty. But if there's an offense that can make up for a five-yard penalty, it's this one. No, they'll make up for it right here with a big pass attempt. And they're not worried about those little five yards and on second and three to make it second and eight. The line to make for the first down is just outside the red zone at the 21. Zappi has time to throw, angles it for the end zone, and it's a little bit out of the reach of the receiver, Vernon Harrell, out of Missouri City, Texas. Harrell is also a guy who can get downfield. He's averaging 29 yards a catch. Cedric Woods, Khalil Ladler back in coverage. A very young secondary for Louisiana Tech. Last week, there were three freshmen in that secondary who started. Zappi. Weaving back and forth, crosses the 20, gets to the 18, and that's plenty good for the first down. Took exactly what Tech gave him, Lynn. They were all ready for him to zip it to one of his four receivers out in the flat. Instead, plenty of room for him to get a first down. Houston Baptist quickly to the line of scrimmage. That ball may have been rerouted at the line. Zappi throws it incomplete. He has completed 62.2% of his passes this year, already over 1,000 yards, averaging 523 and a half yards per game through the air in the first two outings. Zappi, a senior out of Victoria, Texas. If ever there were an appropriate name to run a, an offense like this, it's Zappi. To the ground, Woods plows forward. Gets to about the 15. That will come up a little better than five yards to go. Shahan J. Araja wrote a great piece on Bailey Zappi this week on TexasFootball.com and talked about how this guy who's 6'2", 215, this great frame for a quarterback, and you see what his arm can do. HBU was his only offer coming out of high school. Zappi has protection, fires, caught inside the five. First and goal for HBU as Ben Ratzliff left his feet to make that catch. Ratzliff is really impressive. I mean, he has so many great weapons to go to. This quarterback loves finding all of them, too. He will spread it around all night long, and now within only four yards of giving his team an early lead. Ratzliff, a senior out of San Diego. He had 13 catches, averaging 16 and a half yards per catch coming in. Quick flip to the outside, caught, and a touchdown for HBU. HBU takes the lead on the touchdown reception by Jareth Stearns. We've already seen a lot of Josh Stearns. This is his older brother, Jareth the Jr. Looking to get his 200th catch of the season tonight. He's now three away from hitting that milestone. He had 23 catches in the first two games. And the kickoff, uh, the extra point is good by Garcia. HBU has a 7-3 lead. Zappi uncorks his eighth touchdown pass of the year. Coming up in this drive, you'll see it right here as he connects with Jarrett Stearns, his second scoring reception of the season. And Bailey Zappi throwing well in his first drive, five of seven, Chris. He's everything as advertised so far. The drive lasted 10 plays over the course of 75 yards, three and a half minutes expired. Zappi throwing for 67 of those yards. 
This kickoff is going to be returned from deep in the end zone. And running it back to about the 25 where it would have been placed for the normal touchback. So certainly a gamble there, but it worked out okay. Louisiana Tech typically will play one FCS opponent per year. Originally, it was supposed to be Prairie View A&M this season, but the SWAC among many SWAC among many FCS leagues that pushed everything back to the spring. In the Southland, they did allow teams to play non-conference games, hence why you have HBU here tonight. There is running room up the middle for Justin Henderson. That's the longest run for Louisiana Tech in the early going. As Henderson picks up 10 plus, first down at the 36. Each team has had one possession. Each team has had a score. 7-3 HBU leads. Eight minutes remain in the opening period from Ruston. Henderson in motion to the left side. An empty backfield, a throw over the middle. Caught at midfield with no defenders around and struggling to about the 45-yard line is Adrian Hardy. That's a well-developed play. It took some time to let all of the receivers fully extend their routes, and Anthony was on target to Hardy. Hardy had a team high, 79 yards receiving a week ago and also one of the more explosive plays of the night. Anthony sets, he'll heave it for the home run. He's got a man behind the secondary, caught, touchdown, Wayne Toussaint. The sophomore out of tiny Maringouin, Louisiana, had beat the secondary. Anthony threw a teardrop, long pass downfield, Wayne Toussaint. Right there for the reception, a step ahead of the end zone, and he goes in. Skip Holtz has promised us that we're going to see both quarterbacks tonight rotating out between Anthony and Aaron Allen. But the way Anthony is playing right now, the way he ended last week's game, it certainly feels like this will be his job down the line. Please start the play clock on my signal. Everybody appeared ready to go for the PAT attempt. Jacob Barnes has punted the ball well in the early going this season for Louisiana Tech. He also has not missed a place kick. He had a 51-yard field goal earlier. And he makes it a 10-3 game. Make it a 10-7 advantage as Louisiana Tech Leads HBU, Wayne Toussaint on the receiving end of the long touchdown heave. We've had scoring on every possession so far, just like we thought we might. The pride of Maringouin, Louisiana, Wayne Toussaint on the receiving end of this deep ball down near the end zone. He catches it a step away from scoring territory and gives Louisiana Tech its second lead of the game. Tech got a 51-yard field goal to take a 3-0 lead, then gave up a touchdown to fall behind, but Toussaint from Anthony makes it 10-7. Louisiana Tech. Quick drive, lasting three plays over 75 yards, a minute and five seconds spent. And not much available on that uh, kickoff return. They come up short of the 25-yard line. Zach Hannibal, or I beg your pardon, that was uh, Ian Beek who brought it back. First down and 10 now from the 18. Louisiana Tech has had two possessions and two scores. HBU drove the length of the field to get a score in its only possession. Zappi throwing on first down and almost through his first interception of the season. Pass is incomplete. That ball was off the mark. Khalil Ladler had a chance at it, one of a couple of safeties in the standard Louisiana Tech defense. 
Second and 10 from the 18 for Bailey Zappi, a senior out of Victoria, Texas. Zappi had 69 completions in the first two games this year. He's flushed out of the pocket, now finds some space, fires, and that's incomplete. That one was intended for Ratzlaff, and there was very good coverage as he was streaking across the middle. You mentioned Bailey hailing from Victoria, and where he grew up may be the only reason why he only had that one offer coming out of high school. That's probably one of the great untapped areas as far as recruiting goes in college football is that Rio Grande Valley and the surrounding region. Third and 10 after two misfires by HBU. Zappi under pressure gets rid of it. He's got his man on the far sideline. It's a first down near the 32 yard line. That's a well delivered ball to Jareth Stearns. Great out heading over to the sidelines. Perfectly placed ball from Zappi. Zappi to Stearns has been a very, very effective hookup. Last year, Stearns caught 105 passes for nine touchdowns, 833 yards. He can get into the end zone as he already has done tonight, but he's also a great possession receiver. They'll work him on second and third downs, and he's not a big guy, but he'll take some physical punishment and holds on to the ball. Woods on that last run, good for about eight. Second and a long two, Zappi throws off his back foot and delivers low to Woods. He can't come up with it. To follow up on that number you had for Jareth Stearns, 105 catches last year. That was the best in FCS across the country last season. What amazed me, despite that, despite that he led the country in that category, he was only a third team all-conference selection. This will be the quarterback keeping it, and he goes to the right side and has the first down. That was uh, Blaze Benson who came in for the express purpose of running the ball. A big guy, 6'5", 225-pound redshirt freshman from Sherman, Texas. He did the same thing last, or two weeks ago, rather, against Texas Tech. Came in on a fourth and one play at the beginning of the second quarter just for the express purpose of using that big body. First and 10 at the HBU 43. Zappi has to throw it away, gets it to the right side where a man is waiting. And not much of a pickup there for Stearns. You know, getting back to Benson, mm -hmm. that's a perfect name for a Texas football player, Blaze. We've got a few good names in this game. We have Blaze on the HBU side. We also have a Smoke in this game, in Smoke Harris. HBU sends the tail back to the ground. A flag comes flying in as the gain is made out to the 50-yard line. That was Ian Beak out of Katy, Texas, the home of the Southland Conference Basketball Championship Tournament for many years. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 95. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Gerald Wilbon, the nose tackle, Caught for being illegally affixed out of St. Rose, Louisiana. He started his career at the University of Texas. So 15 yards moves the ball to the 35. Well, the running back, Ian Beef, being Beak, part of one of two sets of brothers on this team. Brother Ethan is a cornerback. And, of course, you've had Josh and Jareth Stearns taking up plenty of Screen time so far. This is Beak again. He's got some open field. And he works his way inside the 20. They'll mark him near the 17-yard line. A very nice run on first down by HBU. Chris, that was the perfect play call for the Louisiana Tech defense and a first down run. A bit of a surprise. Now HBU for the second time is in the red zone. 
Throw goes to the outside, caught inside the 10 by Ratzlaff, and he's thrown down at about the seven. First and goal now for HBU. Plenty of credit to go around. The offensive coordinator for HBU, Zach Kitley, done an amazing job installing this air raid offense. And then Zappi really has a lot of freedom to check to the proper play, depending on what he reads. Zappi throws it to the corner, and that is bobbled and incomplete. Intended for Harrell, it looked like he had pushed off to create some space, but he could not make the catch in the deep corner of the end zone. Harrell is a rangy sophomore, 6'4", 215 pounds. Had his hands on it, but could not bring it to his chest. Yeah, jostling a bit. Had a chance at that one. I'm sure he's kicking himself not be able to bring that in. When you place, face a good FBS opponent in his FCS team, a lot of breaks have to go your way. We've already seen a few go against HBU. Stearns in motion. The throw goes to the other side. Caught for a touchdown by Ben Ratzlaff. He has been a factor early, has Ben Ratzlaff, the senior from San Diego. Bailey Zappi throws his second touchdown in the first quarter. And, Chris, we've had two possessions by Louisiana Tech. We've had two by HBU, and we've had scoring on all of them. And Ratzlaff now just one behind Jareth Stearns for HBU's all-time lead in touchdown catches. Stearns has 15 Rats laugh with his 14th. Garcia slaps through the extra point, and back and forth we go. 3.42 remains in the first quarter. It's now 14 to 10, HBU leading. Rats laugh perhaps has been overlooked a little bit behind the production of the Stearnses, but Rats laugh a year ago caught 87 passes for 1,139 yards and 12 touchdowns. Let's look at his touchdown reception one more time, Chris. I think with Ratzlaff, he's like a lot of these guys on the HBU roster, just happy to get an opportunity. And the recruiting job that Vic Sheely and his staff has done to find these young men who may not otherwise be getting offers, Ratzlaff didn't have any D1 interest coming out of high school, went to a JUCO, and then landed with HBU after spending the time at the two-year school. And they've just put together a fantastic roster. You know, they won't have an opportunity to chase a conference championship this season or a playoff berth. But, you know, none of these guys are losing a year of eligibility. If they so choose, this entire team can come back in the fall of 2021 and could do some major damage on the national level. Well, to extend that storyline with the Southland Conference, it will start play in late February, it will conclude play in the middle of April. There will be only conference games. Seven teams will participate, and they will have a championship game, and then there will, if things go right, be a national championship game in Frisco, Texas in the middle of May. North Dakota State, of course, will be chasing another national championship there at Toyota Stadium, always the favorites. NDSU will actually play just one game this fall before playing their Missouri Valley schedule in the spring. And that one opponent comes out of the Southland Conference as they'll host Central Arkansas. It looked like there was premature movement along the line of scrimmage, but there are no flags down and the snap was muffed. A loss of about five, maybe six. So Luke Anthony could not come up with that low snap. Second and 16, we'll call it. Anthony rolls to his right. He sets. He fires deep. Incomplete at the 32, and a flag is thrown. The ball was slightly underthrown. Isaiah Graham was the intended target. He saw the ball coming up short, tried to reverse and go back to get it. And that's when the contact occurred with the defender. Pass interference. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's a really tough break for Isaiah Cash. He did have really good coverage, and only by returning to the underthrown ball does he get the flag on him. But once again, turning very late to locate the football, and that's 
usually enough if there's contact to determine a foul. And Chris, you've heard me say it for years. If I could change the college football rule book, I would go to the pro rule when it comes to pass interference. Yeah, Tech would be much further down the field at this point if Lynn Rollins had his way. So many things in the world would be better if you had your way, Lynn. Well, we could start with uh, the pandemic, that's for sure. <laughs> There's Smoke Harris. You spoke about him earlier, the sophomore from St. Francisville, one of the loveliest communities in Louisiana, down on the Mississippi River. Beautiful. Smoke Harris, a second-year player, not a big guy, 5'6", but a well-built 184 pounds. Luke Anthony sets, throws, incomplete, very well defended by a couple of guys. Philip Osai, a defensive end, actually had dropped back into coverage, and he was the primary defender. Setting up a third and four play for Louisiana Tech. And just to follow up on your point of everything you'd love to fix, uh, it, we are adjusting. This is our first game together in the 2020 season. And usually Lynn likes to punch me on the arm a little bit when he has a great point to make. But we're separated by plexiglass. Can't do that this season, Lynn. I've already bruised myself a couple of times. That catch is made by Harris, and it's good enough to move the chains. So a safe throw. Harris with a little drag pattern over the middle. Luke Anthony with a chance to throw it. Now, the first two possessions, even though they resulted in scores, HBU was getting some pressure on Anthony. Not so much lately. No, they're doing a good job. And, you know, one thing interesting to point out, there is going to be a rotation at some point between Anthony and Allen, but Anthony has still is still on the field. Anthony is, uh, Allen has not got his chance yet. Curious to see if that happens after this drive. We slip under the two-minute mark in the first quarter. Coming to the near side is the ball carrier for a short advance. Tucker last week, 65 yards against Southern Miss, just six shy of his career best. Israel Tucker, a three-year letter winner. He's a senior out of Metairie, Louisiana. He may be the swifter of the two, Henderson and Tucker. And, Chris, it's certainly feasible to think of that duo, that brace of running backs, Henderson and Tucker, perhaps the best two running back combination in Conference USA. It could end up being that way. We're looking forward to seeing exactly what Henderson can do now that he is full go. He wasn't last week. He had missed a couple of weeks of preparation, only got to 100% last Friday. Anthony pulls it down. He knows where he's got to go, and he finds enough yardage to move the chains, it appears. It looked like he got to that marker at the 43-yard line. And it will be a first down on the keeper to the left side. Yeah, really nice work out of him with the empty backfield to find that running lane and get the first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Less than a minute remains in the opening period. We go back and forth. Louisiana Tech. A shot to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Tucson for the second time. A two-step by Tucson as he gets to the end zone. And Luke Anthony twice has hooked up with long teardrop passes into the arms of Wayne Tucson. Trey Fluellen in coverage for HBU. Vic Sheely told us that he's consistent, just makes significant difference on that defense. But in this in this instance, missed times is leave Tucson able to make the catch. And the Bulldogs are in business. They'll go up by three with a PAT. Tucson with terrific concentration. As for a moment, that ball was hidden from his sight. But he hauled it in. And he's got his second long touchdown reception from Luke Anthony in the first quarter. So, Chris, oftentimes pregame prognostications don't necessarily pan out. 
we thought there would be a lot of scoreboard changes. Yeah. Every time somebody's had the ball, they've scored in the first quarter. No, I, I think we're going to get exactly what we expected there. Back and forth and the first offense not to be able to put numbers on the board. Maybe the one that has its team fall tonight. But, you know, this is one of the better FBS versus FCS matchups that you're going to see this season. There aren't very many of them. Only 15 FCS teams are active here in this fall. So not a ton of opportunities. But HBU, the way they've lit up the scoreboard both against North Texas and then again against Texas Tech. I think a lot of eyeballs are on this one tonight to see what HBU can do. And then they get one more opportunity next week and they'll do it against a team at their level, an FCS opponent in Eastern Kentucky. And you know, lost in the turmoil of actual games being canceled and moved, et cetera, is the fact that uh, many of the so-called paycheck games have gone away, just about all of them. It's put a severe crimp in the uh, budgets of some of the smaller schools as they could not pick up the paycheck, uh, even though it might have been an early season loss. Financially, it's really a double loss. Well, if HBU had been blown out against the Mean Green and the Red Raiders were going into this game just limping. I think you would have heard a lot of national criticism about this gauntlet that they're facing and three FBS opponents in a row. But they have been with both of those teams. They're right with Texas, with Louisiana Tech tonight. So they're showing that they can certainly play with anybody. I think if the players, if it was up to them completely, they'd say, yeah, go ahead and give us 11 FBS opponents if you can find them. Bailey Zappi on first down, hands it off, and not much available. Some first down runs have been effective. That one wasn't by Woods. A loss of a yard, second and 11, with half a minute to go in the opening period, and there have been a lot of fireworks. Four touchdowns and a 51-yard field goal. Zappi will throw. He's flushed. He survives. He's got a relief release valve on the right side. And what looked like was going to be trouble results in a decent gain for Woods, who just sifted out of the backfield and made himself available to Zappi. Now, Jay Leon did a really good job shifting and having patience holding his spot there, allowing for the outlet. Now more manageable third down play for Zappi. And that he'll do it after the, the break. Quarter. We come to the end of the first quarter. There's been a lot of scoring. Louisiana Tech 17, HBU 14 on ESPN3. Back in a moment to Rustin with more in the first half. Patrolling the sideline for Louisiana Tech. He's got 145 career victories. That makes him ninth among active FBS coaches as we play here this year. Pressure on Zappi. He eludes it for the moment. Still on his feet, weaving behind the line of scrimmage. Now slings it away after a long back and forth quarterback possession. Finally, he ran out of room and probably breath and dumped it away. Zappi, at least this season, has not had to avoid that kind of pressure quite as often as HBU has made some great improvements to their offensive line, bringing in a few JUCO transfers. Well, they've only allowed four sacks, and considering how often they pass the ball, that's pretty good work by the offensive line. Now, really good. Again, really improved. They made a point in the offseason to bring in some big guys, make life easier on Bailey. Blake Patterson hits the left-footed kick. Fair catch is made at the 27-yard line. We've got a couple of uh, south paws or south feet kickers tonight. Gorgeous night in Ruston, Louisiana. You wish you could have a packed out Joe IA Stadium. We normally would. Chris, by the way, stop the presses. We've got a headline. Okay. Somebody did not score on one of their possessions. Oh, yeah. How about that? 
I don't think we're going to see that very often tonight, Lynn. But the attendance capped at 7,140 per government orders. The top attendance here at Joe IA came back. Luke Anthony is on the money on a first down throw. And the advance out to the 50-yard line. That's Tucson again, I believe. Came back or in was that Griffin A. Bear? I'll have to check that. Sorry about that. 228,714 when Tech faced ULM that season. This throw over the middle is incomplete. I thought we might see Aaron Allen in the second quarter. We haven't yet. Skip Pohl said they both will definitely play. Aaron Allen started the game last week. We had that conversation with him on Thursday morning, and that was the intent but certainly as a coach, I believe you would have, if the, if the feel is there, that Luke is just really on top of things tonight and you don't want to sit him down, maybe Allen won't get the chance. Well, when you've scored on every possession so far, that's exactly what uh, is supposed to happen. Justin Henderson with a determined run. Look at this. Henderson just fighting off people, repelling tacklers and rumbling and stumbling and powering his way down to the 15-yard line. That's the type of Justin Henderson performance that we're used to seeing. Again, was not full go last week against Southern Miss. Wasn't quite back in shape after a couple of weeks off. May have ridden him a little too hard early in that ball game so he couldn't perform late. But right now appears to be full strength. First and 10 from the 15, Anthony is blasted as he throws, works it to the corner of the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown. Luke Anthony hooking up with Graham. The senior from Bastrop by way of TCU. Hauls in this beautifully delivered ball. He outfights the defender and then comes down hard on the tailbone. He appears to be shaken up, but is now moving off the field rather gingerly. Under his own power, but the Z receiver doing a great job spotting that ball, bringing it in, using all this strength to hold off the HBU pass defender. And it'll be a 10-point advantage for the Bulldogs with the kick. And the boot is up and true by Jacob Barnes. 13.34 to play. Every time Louisiana Tech has had the ball in the first half, it has scored and has a 10-point lead. Has extended its lead, first on a determined run by Justin Henderson. He's got 47 yards now on four carries, and Chris, most of it on this tote. Yeah, really well done, and then Anthony Delivers a great ball there to finish off the drive. Complete to Isaiah Graham, 15 yards. A four-play drive carrying 72 yards. Just 68 seconds elapsed. Another quick job by the Tech offense. This return will start at the three. And it concludes short of the 20. Beak on the return. So for the first time, a 10-point deficit faces HBU. Bailey Zappi, 10 for 17, 105 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He looks to the left side, throws it back to the right side, and boom! Jareth Stearns is planted. He is just hit very, very hard by Trey Baldwin. Now in the days of targeting penalties, you don't see that kind of force used quite as often in college football. Thankfully, a clean tackle, but a very hard hit issued by Trey. Baldwin, a 6'2", 207-pound senior, a three-year letter winner who started his career at Trinity Valley Community College. Zappi wants to sling it. Now is flushed out of the pocket. We've got a penalty marker behind Zappi that probably will be holding. Zappi runs out of bounds near the 25. 
Gabriel Martinez got tied up, ultimately lost his helmet, but I think he'll be the culprit. We see the call from our referee, Ken Ante. Holding, number 75 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Twelve forty-six remains in an entertaining first half. The line to make for the first down is the 30, and that is 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. Beak is in the backfield with Zappi. 35 touchdown throws a year ago. 357 completions on the season. That was the most in the country. Zappi dumps it off at the last moment. And Beak works his way out to about the 21-yard line. That's close to the original line of scrimmage. Game number one at home for Louisiana Tech. It's third down. Third down and nine. Zappi waits for something to clear over the middle and throws it into the hands of B.J. Williamson down the sideline. Did he get in? He did not. He was knocked out of bounds near the three-yard line. But B.J. Williamson, the sophomore out of Dallas, one of those brace of safeties, along with Khalil Ladler, B.J. Williamson made a terrific interception. And Chris, he had his eyes on that one from the get-go. It was Bailey Zappi's 131st pass on the 2020 season and his first interception. And it cost his team dearly as Texas, as Louisiana Tech is down now to the three-yard line. Zappi obviously did not see Williamson. He looked like he was playing a middle zone there, and that ball came to the receiver and actually was closer to Williamson than anybody else. Forced it in there. Not, not something we're used to seeing from Zappi. That kind of errant pass does a really nice job finding some tight windows from time to time, but just no open window there. And we do see Allen for the first time tonight in Louisiana Tech offense. Aaron Allen out of Missouri City, Texas. So he's in at quarterback for the first time. Timeout, Houston Baptist. HBU takes a timeout. It's first. Allen at 6'1", 203 pounds, a sophomore. He played a little bit last Media year timeout. and we'll be back in a moment with louisiana tech out in front 24 to 14. louisiana tech has first and goal inside the five yard line courtesy of this interception and return by bj williamson the member of the conference usa all freshman team a year ago, product of John Horn High School in Mesquite, the Dallas area. Aaron Allen calls for the football, hands it off to the tailback, and an easy stroll into the end zone for Justin Henderson. Henderson was not contested until he got into the end zone, and Louisiana Tech moves out in front 30-14 to 14 early in the second quarter in Ruston. That gets Henderson up to 50 yards on the night already with five attempts. Noah White will hold the snap. Jacob Barnes will kick it. Barnes actually was recruited as a punter and has certainly proven his worth as a place kicker as well. He adds another extra point. So with 12.01 to go in the second quarter, Louisiana Tech 31, HBU. 14, Henderson into the end zone for the latest score for the Bulldogs. So Tech out to a pretty significant lead now here with 12 minutes to go in the second. But remember two weeks ago, this is about when things changed for HBU. They got down 21-3 to in the second quarter 
to Texas Tech and then ended up winning the final two and a half quarters by a 30 to 14 count. So HBU, don't doubt them for a second. Still plenty of firepower. They can score points in bunches. Well, in the first two games, HBU has been outscored 23 to three in the first quarter, but they have outscored their opponents by one in the second quarter, 17-16. And they also hold a fourth quarter advantage at 27-21. Beak makes the fair catch at the three-yard line. The ball will be placed at the 25. Every time Louisiana Tech has owned the football in the first half, it has changed the scoreboard. Four touchdowns, three touchdown throws by Luke Anthony. Isaiah Graham making a touchdown reception. Toussaint with a pair of them. A touchdown run by Henderson and a 51-yard field goal by Jacob Barnes. If we get a moment here on this drive, we'll take a look at some of the scores from around Conference USA. Three different games in the conference, all postponed due to COVID-19 issues. That's a shame. A short pass on a release throw winds up in the hands of Ian Beak. And he gets five out of it to the 30. All the other games in the conference are final. Just down the road from here in Ruston, UTEP playing a non-conference affair at Louisiana Monroe. And the Miners win big, 31-6. Zappi throws it out on a quick release to the left side with a couple of blockers, but not a lot of running room is available. UTEP previously, its two wins had come against FCS opponents, both out of the Southland, taking on Stephen F. Austin and Abilene Christian. But this is their first win against an FBS opponent this year and do it in convincing fashion. Dion Hankins with three touchdowns over at Malone Stadium. Ian Beek with a couple of yards on that reception, third and three. The line to make is the 35. Zappi slings it off the hands of a receiver at the 40. That ball... Got right in on Ben Ratzlaff, but he could not hold it. It would have been a first down. But instead, Houston Baptist will have to punt it. The other two CUSA games today that have gone final, both losses by the Conference USA team. Florida International fell at Liberty, 36-34, and Southern Miss beaten by Tulane, 66 to 24, the final in Hattiesburg. This kick is very high and pitches out of bounds near the 40 yard line. We'll be back in a moment. Louisiana Tech leading 31 to 14 in Ruston. After a short punt, Louisiana Tech will own the football at its own 42-yard line, leading HBU 31-14. A good start tonight by HBU offensively, scoring on its first two possessions. But since then, not only has HBU failed to in any way hinder the Louisiana Tech offense, HBU sputtering at the moment offensively with the football. They can't afford to get too far behind, Chris. No, but as I mentioned, they can put up points really, really quickly. They came back against Texas Tech, and if they would have converted that two-point conversion at the end of the game, would have been going to overtime potentially against the Red Raiders. But you don't want to lose any ground. Again, against an FBS opponent, an FCS squad has to have pretty much everything go right and hope a lot of breaks work in their direction. And so far, that really hasn't happened for the Huskies. Allen hands it off on first down. Not much available. We went over the Conference USA scores in the last segment. We owe you scores from around the Southland Conference as well. As we've mentioned several times, the Southland not playing conference games this fall. There is no FCS championship in this fall. All that pushed back to the spring, but there are still Southland teams active with non-conference games. Israel Tucker failed to get any yardage on that first down run. And the throw is low and bobbled and it falls incomplete. Allen was forced to throw off his back foot and he couldn't quite get enough on it to Jawan Johnson. 
two other Southland Conference teams in action on this Saturday evening. Stephen F. Austin is on the hilltop taking on the SMU Mustangs, and it's all ponies at this point, 28 to nothing in the second. Missouri State and Central Arkansas just getting underway on the purple and gray stripes in Conway. Allen is forced to scramble out of the pocket, puts on his brakes, and turns right back into a defender. There is a penalty marker down, and it looked like the Huskies might have been into the neutral zone prematurely. If so, it will bring up third and five. Defense, number nine. Five-yard penalty, third down. Caleb Johnson, one of the linebackers, who is the leading tackler for the Huskies with 25 of them in the first couple of games, got a premature start. So third and five. Johnson, just in talking with Vic Sheely earlier in the week, he thinks that he's one of those guys that has a chance to play at the next level, has the body for it, and the skill. Allen with a quick release, pegs it over the middle, incomplete, very well defended. So Louisiana Tech fails to come up with a first down. And I believe this is the first possession in which Louisiana Tech has not moved the scoreboard. Both teams will now have a punt registered to their name. We don't expect to see a lot of that tonight, but... Right now in this ball game, we've seen these offense, offenses fizzle a little bit. See if they can catch fire again. And HBU is forced to take another timeout on the defensive side. Timeout. So Jacob Barnes will have to wait before he receives the deep snap. 30 seconds. 9.51 remains in what has been an active first half. Louisiana Tech, with the exception of this drive, has scored on every possession. Three touchdown passes, a touchdown run, and a 51-yard field goal. A couple of touchdown throws for Zappi for the Huskies. It is strange to look across the way and see the stands as empty as they are as Louisiana has set these procedures in place. It's a combination, as you see around the stadium, of rules and regulations set by the state and also Conference USA putting some regulations in place that all teams have to follow. One of them that we uh, learned about in pregame is a limitation on Spirit Squad members that can be on the field. Usually, Louisiana Tech would have about 70 spread around the field in some form or fashion. I believe that number is capped at 17 this season, so the various groups will all rotate each quarter to get a chance to participate on the field. Jareth Stearns is waiting for the punt from Jacob Barnes. A high, wobbly kick. It takes a sideways roll and now backs up a little bit, and it'll be placed down at about the 30 one yard line, so about a 24-25 yard kick. Barnes miss hit that one. Gives Bailey Zappi a shorter field to work with. We talked with Vic Sheely about what constitutes a victory for his team this season. Obviously, they're going to be heavily the underdog in at least three of their four games. Last year, a 5-7 and seven record, best in program history, but they were in every game in the fourth quarter. Had a chance to make that an even better record. But this year, they'll find wins in being able to play each time that they have an opportunity. They have to really be disciplined and, as he said, not just beat the, not try to beat the opponent, but you also have to beat COVID-19 each week. Ian Beek for a few yards on first down. We'll check the penalty marker. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield. Number 75 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, second down. Gabriel Martinez. Correction, first down. Gabriel Martinez out of San Juan Capistrano, California. 
a junior was not close enough to the line of scrimmage as an offensive lineman. We've seen him cost the Huskies yards on a couple of occasions tonight, once on a hold. The line to make for a first down is the 41. First and 15, 9.22 to go in the second quarter. Zappi steps up and slides down at about the original line of scrimmage. 31-14, Louisiana Tech leading by 17 at the moment after trailing 3-0 and 10-7. Actually trailing 7-3. Second down and long, Zappi. Facing only a three-man rush. He'll set, he'll sling it. And that ball is incomplete, coming up a bit short. Zappi with a sidearm throw to Jareth Stearns from Waxahachie, Texas. Stearns had an opportunity on a trick play against Texas Tech, and you look at it, just thought maybe it was a little too cute. It was the end of a 15-play, 75-yard drive, tried a little halfback pass on the seven-yard line, ended up forcing it into coverage, and the Red Raiders came up with an interception. Zappi puts some air under this one. It's on the fingertips of the receiver, and it falls incomplete. Vernon Harrell nearly made a miraculous catch. Nice coverage by the freshman cornerback Cedric Woods from Monroe. Watch Woods here. He's looking back for the ball. He knows it's coming down to the receiver. Well done, young man Cedric Woods. And HBU forced the punt again. More work that we did not expect out of the HBU special teams. That kick was almost blocked. A lot of traffic. Fair catch. At, no. The return is on from the 20. A flag is thrown. And the ball, for the moment, will be placed at the 41-yard line. Smoke Harris on the return. Smoke Harris on the return for Louisiana Tech. I thought he was going to fair catch it. But he was able to scoot his way out to the 41, pending the penalty marker. And it looks like it will go against the Bulldogs. And there is an injured player back at the 25. During the return, block in the back, number 89 on the return team. 10 yards. First down. So we'll take a timeout here, 8.20 to go in the first half. Louisiana Tech has a chance to add to its 31-14 lead over HBU. Welcome back, everyone. Chris Mikoski, Lynn Rollins with you. Louisiana Tech trailed early but has rolled to a 31-14 lead with a lot of time remaining in the second quarter against the HBU Huskies out of the Southland Conference. One of four teams out of that conference who are playing a semblance of a fall schedule and will not participate in uh, what will be a seven-team race for the Southland Conference Championship if and when football resumes in the middle of February next spring. HBU, Central Arkansas, Stephen F. Austin, and Abilene Christian all opting to exclusively concentrate on fall football. Luke Anthony back in at quarterback after a couple of series by Aaron Allen, and he has twisted off his feet. Anthony, formerly of that aforementioned Abilene Christian football team. He had some preferred walk-on opportunities at FBS schools, but ACU offered him a full scholarship. And the Wildcats had a lot of good things going, a new stadium that bore his family name, also recently moving up to the FCS level. That was Greg Vincent on the sack, a backup nose tackle, a senior out of Deer Park, Texas. And he was right there to plant Luke Anthony. A loss back to the 13-yard line. 16 to go for the first down, and here's a big chunk of it. Out to about the 30 goes the receiver, Adrian Hardy. 
for Anthony, we asked him how strange it was playing on a field that bore his family name. He said it came with a stigma. A lot of people thought that he was given a handout to play football for ACU. So you, he had to absolutely outwork everyone and prove that he had, had the talent to play. Certainly did so. Great stuff for ACU over the course of the past few years. Well, he and also now, was voted the team captain right, for the last couple of seasons, two, too. Two-year captain for the Wildcats. And now translates that leadership, transfers that leadership ability over here to Louisiana Tech. And it's very clear his teammates have rallied behind him for the short time that he's been Bolden. on campus in Rusty. Offense, number seven. Adrian seven. Hardy's catch is brought back. The previous spot. First down. First down. Donovan Campbell, the left tackle, a graduate student, a transfer from LSU out of Ponchatoula, Louisiana, was guilty of holding. The ball is moved back to the 19. First down and 20 for the Bulldogs who have a 17-point advantage after a thrilling one-point win over the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg last week. The touchdown came with 14 seconds to go to give Louisiana Tech that one-point victory. A great catch on the sideline results in a first down, and that is Griffin Bear. He caught two touchdown balls last week, got one in the first quarter, and then on the same play later, with time running out on a fourth down play near the goal line, he caught one in the back of the end zone. A different quarterback, same play call. It worked so well the first time, they decided it was the right play to go to in that clutch situation where they only had one opportunity left. Interestingly enough, Anthony and Griffin Bear are roommates. Anthony will take a shot, puts a lot of air under this one, slightly underthrown, and it falls incomplete. Adrian Hardy was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second and 10. And Lynn, you mentioned the roommate situation. This year at Tech's, at uh, Louisiana Tech and really across all college football programs, you're not seeing players of the same position as roommates. That used to be pretty typical, but with COVID-19, you if one person gets infected, with contact tracing, they both may be ruled out for the next football game. So you cannot have a single position reduced in that way. This is Kyle Maxwell making his first reception of the night. Maxwell, a red shirt freshman from Amit, Louisiana. And that's good enough for a first down. Now on road trips, Anthony and Allen do serve as roommates but that's after everybody's gone through the three tests throughout the week they have the one final test before they're able to get on the bus or the plane so that at that point they know that everybody is cleared to play that weekend ball game. here's another hard run by justin henderson we've seen him pump the pinions already in this first half and drag tacklers with him the kind of henderson that we're used to seeing here in ruston Chris, let's check his numbers. First down after that burst up the middle at the 32. That was his sixth rush, now 60 yards, so averaging 10 a carry. Anthony throws it quickly out to the right side. It looks like Hardy on the reception. Nope, I believe it may have been Jawan Johnson. It was. Johnson manages to wiggle for about three. Second down. The line to make is the 22 to extend this possession. Gain of three on the play. Second down, seven. Four minutes and 15 seconds are left in the second quarter. Allen throws it quickly out to Hardy. Makes a man miss. Turns to the outside. Stiff arms a defender and carries him for extra yardage down to the 16 and a first down. Second and seven play, the ball thrown just in front of the yard to gain, but able to turn the yards after the catch and earn some additional real estate for Louisiana Tech, now in good shape with first and 10 at the 15. Well, the Bulldogs in the first half 
tonight have scored as many points as they did in four quarters against Southern Mississippi. They've got a chance to add to it right here. First and 10 near the 15-yard line. Plenty of time left in the second quarter. Anthony with a fake, throws it. It is incomplete off the fingertips of the would-be touchdown maker, Adrian Hardy. How about that game last week in Hattiesburg? Scotty Walden, the interim head coach for the Golden Eagles, the youngest head coach in the FBS. Have you ever seen a head coach jumping and screaming? And He was the most animated head coach I've ever seen. He looked like a human can of Red Bull. <laughs> Anthony to the end zone. Caught perhaps on second effort. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Isaiah Graham, his second of the game. Awesome how involved Isaiah Graham has been in the offensive attack thus far. Three catches, two of them for points. And Louisiana Tech now rolling here against the Huskies. Jacob Barnes. The left-footed kicker lines it up out of the hold of Noah White. And he remains perfect in place kicking this year. Chris Isaiah Graham has caught a couple of touchdown passes in this first half, and he's had to leave his feet for both of them. And Graham, not somebody that we talked about in great detail with Skip Holtz earlier in the week when we had our, uh, our call with him, but they have got him heavily involved in the offense here. Obviously, offensive coordinator Joe Sloan finding some great spots to insert him, and that's resulted in a couple of scores, and Louisiana Tech now leads 38-14, to 14, just under three and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Graham is from Bastrop, which is not far from here, and uh, started his career at TCU. He's a senior now at Louisiana Tech, and he has made a couple of flying catches for touchdowns tonight. 38-14, to 14, Louisiana Tech, after trailing early, has found the gas pedal. Many, many years ago, but I spent a lot of nights covering football games at the home of the Bastrop Rams. What an incredible place to watch high school football. Back then it was Brad Bradshaw and that ball club that every week you knew that they were gonna be throwing a ton of passes. And I'm sure if the offense is anything similar to that, Graham caught a bunch of balls for the Navy Blue and Red. 324 remains in the second quarter, 38-14. This is the biggest lead for the Bulldogs, who had scored on every possession with the exception of one. Just to look back at what kind of player he was for the Pastor Brams. Graham was four-star recruit, All-American high school player, ranked as the third wide receiver in Louisiana, and, of course, that resulted in him getting looks from plenty of power fives He's able to start his career as a TCU Horn Frog. Zappi throws it quickly into the hands of Jareth Stearns. 105 receptions a year ago for Stearns. 833 yards and nine touchdown catches. He is the older brother of freshman Josh Stearns, who also plays a big part in this receiving game. Second and six for HBU. Zappi cannot get rid of it. He is slung down. It looked like the pocket was going to remain intact. But a couple of Bulldogs double-teamed him to the ground. The scheming done by Louisiana Tech defensive coordinator David Blackwell and his staff really working out well, penetrating that HBU offensive line a lot more than UNT and Texas Tech were able to do. Levi Bell made that uh, sack, 251 pound middle linebacker. There is running room here after the reception and good yardage up to near midfield on that catch by Beak coming out of the backfield. Pass to Ian Beak, first down, the Huskies. 
Ian Beek making a big play for the Huskies. Here is Stearns. He makes a man miss, and it's knocked out of bounds at the Louisiana Tech bench at about the 26. So here comes HBU. Never out of it, and you never want to leave your screen when you're watching the HBU offense. They're, they are electric, and it really doesn't matter what the score will be tonight. Zappi's still going to throw the ball all over the place. He's got an empty backfield. He looks right. He throws right quickly, and that's caught for short yardage. Darian Sherfield making his first grab of the night. Sherfield is a wide receiver who does not factor heavily in the statistics, but uh, they use a lot of folks and they'll throw to everybody on the field. The third and one opportunity now for HBU. Changing personnel, and they will bring in the big Blaze Benson. Look for him to go right back up the middle. He waits. He looks for the hole to develop, and he puts his shoulder down and gets to the 15, and that will move the chains. That's what he does for this HBU offense. You see him get into the lineup. It's almost a 100% chance that he is going to put his shoulders down and barrel through an attempt to get a short run and a new set of downs. That's twice he has been called upon to do exactly that, and he's been good both times. Zappi back in the game. He resets Woods. Zappi looking left, now turns the other way, fires over the middle, and it's incomplete at the five-yard line. That'll bring up second and 10. Just 43 seconds remaining here in the opening half. Trey Baldwin, from his linebacker position, was in coverage. Last week, what a debut as a rookie middle linebacker by Tyler Grubb. 16 tackles against Southern Mississippi. And he played like he'd had 50 games under his belt. Zappi looking, looking, throwing. Caught. No ruling. Now They'll they say, say no incomplete. Catch. Our camera is right there. Perfect spot for an official replay if it's needed. We'll get another look before the officials decide if they need to. Coming right at you. And did he get the foot down and make the catch? Bobbled. It was a way his back blocked the ball, perhaps bobbling and couldn't bring that one in. And that's the reason for the incompletion as opposed to attempting to get a foot in. So Darian Sherfield almost made the touchdown catch, but it brings up third down. Zappi looking. He's pressured from his left side. There is a penalty marker down. Zappi's got a receiver near the six. He goes down there. That would be very close to a first down, but this is likely coming back on a holding penalty. Pass complete to Stearns. Penalty marker on the field. Holding. Offense number 78. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. Rayward Burnett, the left tackle, was detected holding the sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. And so Houston Baptist will retreat to the 25 with a third down play coming. The line to make is the 11. Twenty-five seconds to play. Zappi is pressured and has to throw it away. That time Louisiana Tech brought some heat. They have not blitzed a lot in the first half. Zappi will leave the field. And we'll see if Gino Garcia is able to knock this one through. He there had a 57 no yard field goal there is last no year. For intentional grounding, the quarter side the top box and the bottom scrimmage. 
This would be about a 47 yard attempt. Season long is 50. And last year he hit one at 57. That best one of this year came as time expired in the first half at North Texas. This kick is good. So both place kickers have been impressive. Gino Garcia knocks through the 47-yard line. Jacob Barnes had a 51-yard field goal earlier. Find me at half to, to talk. Y'all come out together. He was two seconds behind. Ken NT leaving his mic on a little bit longer than uh, he meant to there, instructing some of his fellow officials. Chris, that's the first score for Houston Baptist in a while. It got off to a blazing start and pulled ahead a couple of times. But uh, Louisiana Tech knocked down the offense for a long time. It was 17-14 Tech at the end of the first quarter. Now it is 38-17. to Louisiana Tech leading. The first time for HBU to get on the scoreboard since they went up 14 to 10 with 342 left in the first quarter. Coming up at the break, we'll take a look at the new baseball and softball facilities here for Louisiana Tech, both under construction currently and should be ready for the spring season. This return starts at the three. It concludes out near the 37 yard line. Tucson with a good effort. He's already caught a couple of long touchdown passes. And very impressed by Tucson all night long. Not somebody that we paid great attention to in preparing for this ball game, simply because he hadn't been a major factor in the offense last week against Southern Miss, but he is making his presence felt and should continue to earn some playing time here for Tech, who, by the way, has a short week's prepare now for BYU when this game is over. They'll play at the Cougars in Provo next Friday. So not only six days between games, but also that long travel out to Utah. This is a misfire. And a penalty marker is down. Delay of game costs Louisiana Tech five meaningless yards. Let's see if they take a shot to the end zone with time for one, maybe two plays. Now, they did run off a couple of seconds on the clock. They may put that back. And they do. So seven seconds remain. Three receivers bunched on the left side, one on the right. Luke Anthony, who's had a very nice first half will throw on what will be the last play. Now he'll scramble and is knocked down at about the 42-yard line, and that brings us to the end of the first two quarters here in Ruston. So, Chris, game number one in the books at home for Louisiana Tech. Still 30 minutes to play, but a nice start by the Bulldogs. They're really well done. I think they, the fact that they were able to contain Bailey Zappi and hold HBU to only 17 points in the first.
We are delighted to be with you at Joe I.A. Stadium on the campus of Louisiana Tech at Ruston, where the halftime score is Bulldogs 38, the visiting HBU Huskies 17. Chris Mikoski, Lynn Rollins with you. You know, Chris, in addition to the pandemic and the challenges of COVID-19, weather has been a huge factor destroying much of southwest Louisiana earlier this year. There's also been very damaging weather in north Louisiana. Louisiana Tech's athletic department responded and made a call to the public to donate water and food and pet food and other essentials, and they made a huge haul down to the Lake Charles area to supply some much-needed relief. Yeah, student athletes, coaches, administrators all getting together on Tuesday afternoon to fully load Tech's football equipment truck and send those donations down to Lake Charles and specifically to the McNeese State campus. Plenty of destruction down there. And, you know, we talked about the fact that Hurricane Laura actually was still a hurricane officially when it reached here in Ruston. So the strength that it had in Lake Charles was absolutely tremendous, a category four storm, and that community is still reeling and will be for a long time. And Chris, before we go to break, this appeal, because there is still no power in many parts of southwest right. Louisiana, total devastation. The need is as great as it ever has been for support in all areas. You know, if you it, can help, do it. It continues, and obviously there's plenty of good causes to get to have the means to help the people in Lake Charles, please do so. There was a time in the first half that Houston Baptist held a 14-10 lead over Louisiana Tech. Right now, the Bulldogs have a commanding advantage at 38-17 with a very fine second quarter defensively as well as continuing to keep the heat on offensively it's been a big night for louisiana tech's quarterbacks mostly uh the starter luke anthony but aaron allen has also played well and uh, chris this is a campus that uh, the last couple of years has been replete with uh, some major work on the softball and baseball fields which were destroyed a couple of years ago by a tornado you're seeing time-lapse photography of the new softball stadium the new football uh, the new baseball stadium also is being constructed both are scheduled to uh, have play on them this spring it was the original facilities were destroyed by an ef5 tornado and this is the baseball stadium you're seeing built right now we should see the baseball stadium coming up here there we go jc love Field, the Love Shack going up exactly where it was before. Softball moved slightly across campus, what, by about half a mile, but J.C. Love Field will be exactly where it is. You'll still be able to see the train rolling through the right field side and dorms overlooking on the left field side. Just a perfect place to watch college baseball. And the Conference USA Tournament will be right there at the brand new Love Shack in 2021. So both softball and baseball, new fields here, and they are state-of-the-art. We'll be back with more football from Joe I.A. Stadium in a moment. Louisiana Tech seeking its second win of the year, leads 38-17. Welcome back, everyone. It's halftime at Louisiana Tech, and the Bulldogs have a 38-17 lead over the HBU Huskies. Chris Mikoski, Len Rollins with you. Chris, let's look at some of the numbers in the first half as Louisiana Tech, after trailing early, now leads in first downs 17 to 11. Passing yards, you didn't expect HBU to uh, be trailing in that category. Louisiana Tech 251 to the Huskies 183. And HBU obviously able to sling the ball around quite a bit, but uh, maybe the number that we didn't expect to see also is that Bailey Zappi finally throwing his first interception in this ball game. He ended up going 11 completions on 33 attempts. Tech overall 14 of 26 and they did only have one pass from Aaron Allen. Luke Anthony got the bulk of the work. 14 completions on 25 attempts for 251 yards and all four Bulldog touchdowns through the air. Chris, we joked before the game that we very well could see 100 or more passes in this contest, and we're on that pace. 
HPU has thrown it 33 times. Louisiana Tech has thrown it 26. That's 59 passes in the first half alone. That used to be a couple of weeks' worth of football. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to see just as much, at least on the HPU side, Louisiana Tech may choose to ground and pound a little bit more with a substantial lead, but Bailey Zappi is going to keep throwing it every single chance that he gets, and he'll spread it around. Uh, Jareth Stearns, Ian Beek, Ben Ratzlaff, and Sherfield all getting receptions in that first half of play. Hardy and Graham lead Louisiana Tech with three receptions. Two of Graham's have gone for touchdowns. Tucson has caught two balls. They've both been scores. And Griffin Bear has a couple of catches for 47 yards. We'll be back to get you ready for the third. Louisiana Tech is the site of tonight's game, and the Bulldogs leading 38-17 at halftime. We get set for the third quarter with Lou Holtz looking on. You know, Chris Mikoski, this is the first season in Lou Holtz's... Skip. Yes, I'm sorry. Skip Holtz's <laughs> career in football where his mom has not been looking on from someplace other than heaven. He lost her after a 23-year battle with several types of cancer. She was so courageous over more than a couple of decades. And Skip Holtz, uh, certainly his mom was in his thoughts uh, as we discussed football this past week. Oh, absolutely. I, I always love talking to Skip. And, you know, he'll, he'll bring out a story or two from his dad, Lou, on, on a regular basis. And after that game against Southern Miss. Of course, they always talk after a ball game. And his dad, Lou, told him that, you know, you, your coaching tonight was good enough to get you 0-1. But mom helping you out from above got you to 1-0 with that game-winning catch at the end of the game in Hattiesburg. Well, he obviously very, very close with his mother over the course of his career. There are only eight coaches active in America who have more wins than Skip Holtz. Now, one of, the, one of the best in the game and, you know, what he's been able to do here at Louisiana Tech and the bowl streak that they've been able to put together, six consecutive wins in the postseason. And let's present a special hello and then goodbye to, to the athletic director at Louisiana Tech, Tommy McClellan, who did a marvelous job here for several years overseeing major project after major project has been offered a job at Vanderbilt. He is a, he's, a, he's taken that. We'll start in a couple of weeks as an associate athletic director He'll be there. He'll the deputy 80 there. Tommy was, uh, was certainly a force in the history of Louisiana Tech athletics. Came in as uh, really when he started at McNeese State as the athletic director. I believe he was the youngest AD in Division I at the time and then found the job here at Louisiana Tech and absolutely thrived here in Ruston and every time you came into town just love to visit with him and I certainly hope to stay connected despite the fact that we won't see him see him here in Ruston anymore he and I have actually been at a couple of different athletic directors for Christ events so I look forward to staying in touch in that way and seeing what he can do in Nashville with that Vanderbilt program with the way he's able to fundraise and uh, we'll do that for the Commodores now. So we wish Tommy McClellan and his family very well as they have a move coming very shortly to Nashville and Vanderbilt. We are back to action here. And while we were talking about the Holtz family, we always have to mention Jennifer because she is very good to us. Skip Holtz's wife. Food. Yes. Very, very congenial and uh Puts together a special treat that's become famous across the country for visiting folks here at Louisiana Tech. It's called Bulldog Crunch. Yeah, every announcer that comes in to call a broadcast receives this care package from Jennifer Holtz as a player is down on the field. And we'll talk more about that later on. We'll tell you also about the injured player when we return. Second down play, a short run over the right side. The injured player for Louisiana Tech was the nose tackle, Gerald Wilbon. It looked like they were working on his left ankle, and uh, he's being attended on the sideline right now. Yeah, it took a couple of members of the 
sports medicine staff to help him to the sidelines. Third down and four. The line to make for the first down is the 35 as we're just started here in the third quarter. Houston Baptist won the toss, deferred its choice until the second half. And that peg is short, but it's enough for a first down. And that's right into the hands of Jareth Stearns. Just to finish the thought from before the break, Jennifer Holtz, Skip's wife, every announcer that comes in to broadcast games here at Joe IA Stadium, she really serves as the host um, for visiting media and she presents this care package personalized with our name on it. Bulldog Crunch, just delicious concoction that, uh, you know, when I get to the bottom of this bag every time I'm sad, but I'm also then looking forward to my next broadcast here at Louisiana Tech. It's kind of a combination of M&Ms, yeah. Cheerios, Chex, Chex Mix, and, and some other secret ingredients. With The secret ingredient is what does it, because I can't replicate this at home. Some kind of sugary concoction, <laughs> and it's... Uh, it's addictive. It really is. She could sell it at Bucky's. <laughs> well, there's a sack. Good pressure. Milton Williams making his 15th start tonight. That's most among the defensive players. And this 6'4", 278-pound junior from Crowley, Texas, throws down Zappi. Third and close to 20. Zappi wings it. It's through the hands of a receiver near what would have been a first down marker. And that one is incomplete. Yeah, he had great placement there, but unable to bring it in. Would have had to gain a couple more yards after the catch. Instead results in a fourth and 20 situation, and HBU will have to punt it away again. That was Sherfield who could not hold on to it. He made a couple of catches in the first half. So Louisiana Tech waiting for the football for the first time here in the third quarter. And the kick is returned by Harris from the 35. He's out to midfield. Can he turn the corner? He spins. And finally, with a snake-like run, is thrown down at about the 33-yard line. Well, we've heard from Blaze on the HBU side. Now we hear from Smoke for Louisiana Tech. The biggest character on this team. His confidence is just through the roof. And here he zips and zags and fights his way through that gap. Big gain for Louisiana Tech. Smoke Harris, a sophomore out of St. Francisville, covered one sideline to the other. Personal foul. Face mask, kicking team. Be 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Tack so, on another 15 for Louisiana Tech. That's the ninth penalty for HBU. Louisiana Tech committed four in the first half. So Louisiana Tech will start this drive inside the 20-yard line. Let's see where they mark this. Watch Smoke Harris. He starts to the right and now works to the left, jumps between a couple of defenders, looking for a block, not going to get it. So he takes it to the outside, puts on the brake, spins back, Makes another man miss, jukes again, and finally is corralled on the far sideline. And that's when the face mask occurs, when they finally bring him to the turf. And a long discussion now with Vic Sheely between the uh, officials and the head coach of HBU. Vic Sheely is one of the classy guys in FCS football. Oh, and football altogether. Always enjoy talking with him, and my relationship with him goes back a very long time to when he first accepted the job at Houston Baptist. He's the longest tenured coach in the Southland, and again, took that job back in April of 2012 when 
The Huskies didn't have a season to play that yet that fall. They didn't debut with until 2013 with the developmental season. This is Rip Henderson the going to the left side, head. and certainly a penalty there as Henderson goes cartwheeling on the sideline, spinning like a helicopter blade, and then there was a reason. He's not happy about it, nor should he be. One of the more that extreme, is a dangerous play. Yeah, absolutely. One of the more extreme face masking penalties. Personal foul, see. face mask. He's half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Number 33 does not have to leave the game because his helmet came off as a result of a foul. I should hope not. But just to finish the thought on Vic Sheely, again, he took over long before HBU had games to play. He had a chance to build a program from scratch, and he did it with his bare hands, got very bloody along the way. But look at what he has built, a program that will certainly have a chance to compete for a championship next fall. Luke Anthony hands it off on first and goal from the eight-yard line. HBU had its best season in its short history last year. Five wins. They actually started the year four and one, including a victory at South Dakota. Faltered in the back half of the season against some tough Southland competition, but into the fourth quarter of all but one of those games, they were in contention. It could have been a very big year for the Huskies. Louisiana Tech knocking on the door again. A lob to the outside, broken up, nicely done defensively by Kenneth Kemp, the cornerback, as he prevented Adrian Hardy from making a touchdown catch. Kemp is only a freshman. There are a lot of starting freshmen in the secondary for both of these teams. You know, looking at those classes, it's going to be odd next year. We'll just have to remind ourselves, anybody that shows freshmen could very well have a year under their belt. None of these years of eligibility are counting against these student athletes. They will come back exactly under the classification they have right now. Third and goal from the four. Anthony lobs to the other side. Intercepted. To the 20. To the 30, to the 40. A return of more than 40 yards by DeLon Smith, the senior from Sewanee, Georgia. Anthony threw it right into his hands, and he changed his field position. There is an injured player, but a bad throw by Anthony. He has not made many errors in the first game and a half, but that one came up woefully short in the end zone. Thankfully, DeLon able to pop up. We'll be back in a moment. Houston Baptist with the ball. Well, there is Skip Holtz. He is disappointed about that opportunity to score with third and goal. An interception thrown in the end zone. And then this return out for 45-plus uh, yards. Marked in front of the action there, able to pull it down and have a lengthy return. Took him a while to get up after that secondary hit that came in from Cody Russi. Thankfully able to get up under his own power and head back to the HBU sideline. So DeLon Smith flips the field. And you know, you, you, you mentioned the contact by Cody Russi. This is a senior, by far the most veteran player for Louisiana Tech. He's making his 38th start tonight in his career. That is well above anybody else, at least twice as many starts than anybody else on this Louisiana Tech team. One of the best offensive linemen in Conference USA, a three-year letter winner out of Burleson, Texas. Cody Russi, number 65 on the offensive line for Tech, has been really good for four years. And he's not just one of the best in CUSA. He's one of the best in the country, Lynn. He's on the watch list for the Outland Trophy, which is given to the best interior lineman in college football and of course last year helped Justin Henderson rush for a thousand yards. Jamar Smith won the US CUSA Off Offensive Player of the Year award. Neither of them get that done without Russi on that O-line. Zappi gives a lot of ground. Now tries to throw it away. 
Let's see if they rule intentional grounding. They do. Yeah, still inside the tackle he box. He did not absolutely. get outside the tackle box when he just threw that one up to kill the play. No, it's rare that we see him make intentional grounding. that kind of mistake. Offense, number four. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. The down counts. So that's the worst kind of penalty you can get. A loss of huge yardage and a loss of down. You know, we're running out of fingers and toes to count up uh, what the to-go will be on this upcoming play. It's second and a lot. And that puts HBU in double digits in penalties tonight. We'll call it second and 30. Zappi throws it quickly. He's got a receiver on the right side, and he's rolled out of bounds. After a decent pickup, that's Jareth Stearns. By far and away, the favorite target is Zappi. They hooked up 105 times last year. Can you believe that? You know, as the home team here, you lose a little bit of that advantage with the smaller crowd. Again, just over 7,000 in the building tonight and I think that's something that teams are especially going to miss coming up later in conference play you want the that really loud cheer when it comes to a third and 15 situation you don't want the quarterback to be able to hear the center Zappi fires on the run he finds a receiver in between defenders and a big gain on the far sideline once again it's Jareth Stearns Stearns is only five feet, eight inches tall, as you see. Not a big receiver, 180 pounds. He's a third-year receiver. He finds his way open. He's very knowledgeable as he works his routes. Garrett's now up to 11 catches on the day. Chris, that gives him 34 on the season. Most in program history now, all time. Here's a sling into the hands of a new receiver, that's Tyson Thompson. He actually changed numbers before the game, a freshman out of Spring, Texas. He just added a one to his previous number. Young broadcasters, that is probably the most important thing to do in prep outside of getting pronunciations, seeing if there were any number changes. You don't want to be surprised by that after somebody makes a catch. Personal foul targeting on the defense. The previous play is under review. I'm not sure who was ruled on the targeting penalty. We'll take a look at it right here. I'm going to stay here. Coming in from your left side there, the helmet, the helmet. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. With the slow motion, you could anticipated happening certainly uh, coming in from the left hand side of your screen and that won't take long personal foul targeting and yeah, the official review Five. sees the same views that we do and took it'll take nearly no time at all to uh, confirm that unfortunately the referee's microphone cut out during the explanation. But I believe it was Trey Baldwin, Baldwin yeah. and he will not play anymore. Trey Baldwin, a three-year letter winner. An Skip outside Holtz. linebacker from Orange, Texas. Skip Holt's not getting heated with him explaining the situation very calmly and I don't think Baldwin is overly upset either. He seemed to fully understand why he was ejected. A lot of players in that in that situation might get a little bit heated and really angry about uh, the decision. Zappi calls for the football. They'll go to the ground on first and goal. And working his way for a couple of tough yards is Woods. We talked about Drashawn Manyweather, who had a great season last year in only eight games. He missed 
four games with a, a fractured thumb. But he averaged nearly seven yards per carry. He rushed for over 700. They thought he would come back tonight, but he's had digestive and ulcer issues. They expect him to play last week in what will be the final game of the year for Houston Baptist. Boy, that sounds strange, doesn't it? Very much so. The throw to the outside, caught, touchdown. Once again, it's Jareth Stearns. This is what he does best. Just works a little short route, assesses the defender, makes the cut, and Zappi and Stearns are playing from the same sheet of music. Stearns prepped at Waxahachie High School south of Dallas and learned from a former pro, John Kitna, the former Cowboys and quarterback for various teams. He was the head coach there for the Indians in three of his four years. Gino Garcia adds the extra point. And so an interception in the other end zone set up Houston Baptist, and they come down and get the score. And we've got a 38-24 game. Louisiana Tech leads. Welcome back, everyone, with Chris Mikoski. I'm Lynn Rollins. And, Chris, we've seen what amounts to a 14-point turnaround as Louisiana Tech threw an interception in the end zone. Delon Smith brought it back more than 40 yards. And Houston Baptist goes downfield, throws it into the hands of the veteran Jareth Stearns. He makes the touchdown reception. And so HBU not only thwarts Louisiana Tech, it comes back and adds seven to the scoreboard. Now at halftime, I think the lead probably felt comfortable to Louisiana Tech fans. Right now, I don't think you feel the same way. Only a two score difference and against one of the most high powered offenses in the country. There is running room if that tackle is not made. There was a lot of room between the hash mark and the numeral. As Tucson, who already has caught a couple of touchdown throws, makes a nice return. He's got a little afterburner, doesn't he? And Lane Botkin uh, is the one who saved that play for HBU, finding a seam and rushing in to make the tackle on a dive. Nice work out of him to minimize the damage. So Luke Anthony, whose last throw was an interception in the end zone, comes back on here with 9.43 remaining in a third quarter. Henderson crashes his way for three or four. He's had a nice night. Still trying to work back into football shape after missing a couple of weeks prior to the uh, victory against Southern Mississippi. Henderson had 60 yards rushing in the first half. Louisiana Tech stays on the ground with a big effort by Henderson again. He's a tough load, 5'10", 218 pounds. He'll smack you. Incredibly hard to bring down. Conference USA opponents figured that out all throughout last season. And he'll have another chance to shine on the national stage on Friday night. Big game coming up against BYU, a Cougar ball club that caught the nation's attention quickly this season, destroying Navy on Labor Day weekend. First and 10, screen play to the outside. Not a lot available. That game against BYU will be on Friday night. It'll be the only football game on television. Smoke so Harris on that last reception. It goes for three yards, second and seven. The line to make for a first down is the HBU 49. Three receivers to the bottom of the formation. Anthony has time to throw. Let's it fly. There is contact and a flag is down as the receiver and the defender got their legs crossed. And it looked like Isaiah Graham had cleared the secondary, but he was tripped up inadvertently from behind, and that'll bring a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, and, Chris, I make my case once again. Yeah. This is the reason that college football needs to change the pass interference penalty because it's really a no-fault penalty if you defense, are beaten that badly. 17, now, that was not an intentional trip, but if you're beaten that badly, 
First and you down. know it's going to go for a touchdown. Why not go ahead and get the flag for 15 instead of giving up six? You and I have always been on the same page about this. Completely agree. And that's exactly why Graham was hooting and hollering after that play. He knew he had a score. and He was angry. Anthony looks left, spins right, throws. Got a wide open receiver to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. Jawan Johnson. A junior from Fullerton, California, makes the touchdown reception on a well-developed play. And, Chris, after the reception, there was plenty of open space. Yeah, plenty of room to run, a lot of green in front of them. And Louisiana Tech, uh, the league gets more comfortable now. They'll get to 21 points. But really fantastic work clearing out space and running to pay dirt. Jacob Barnes hits the head pin with the extra point. He's been perfect in place kicking this year. And Louisiana Tech, which scored 31 last week, has 44 tonight, 7.52 to go in the third quarter. And the lead is 21 for Louisiana Tech. And the player, Juwan Johnson, who just scored that touchdown, originates from an area not really known to produce a ton of college football talent. Norwich, Connecticut had to find his way to a couple of top-notch junior colleges to showcase his talents before he got an opportunity at the Division I level. Started off at Hutchinson Community College, then made his way to Fullerton playing for the Hornets, then got the call from Louisiana Tech and saw had a career high, eight carries for 49 yards last year against the UNT Mean Green and here in game two of the 2020 season makes his presence felt. 45-24 Louisiana Tech leading over HBU. Skip Holtz. Looking for a victory here in the first home game for Louisiana Tech. And the Bulldogs will be back here at Joe IA Stadium two weeks from right now, October 10th against UTEP. A short two game homestand, first taking on the Miners and then a really big game potentially in Conference USA with the nationally ranked Marshall Thundering Herd arriving in Ruston on October 17th. If the Bulldogs come away with a victory tonight, it would be number 146 for Skip Holtz. And Chris, that would move him one ahead of Kansas coach Les Miles, formerly of Oklahoma State and LSU. They are both tied for ninth among active coaches in wins. And uh, Skip Holtz with a victory tonight potentially could uh, move out in front of Les Miles. And you brought up LSU. And it's perfect time to mention what happened in Baton Rouge today as the sixth ranked Tigers fell to Mississippi State 44 to 37. KJ Costello from Mississippi State racked up 623 yards of passing offense That's against shocking. LSU's new defensive coordinator, Bo Pelini. That is shocking. HBU on third and short. Tries to run a big guy. Just a crazy day in football all across this state. Louisiana Lafayette winning on a field goal as time expired today against Georgia Southern as for the second week in a row the Ragin' Cajuns come dangerously close to getting knocked off but now but they're nationally the, ranked for yeah. the first time in their history as Blaze Blaze Benson who for the third time tonight was inserted into the game and ran the ball you can almost count on that Chris you mentioned it nearly a hundred percent chance that's what he's going to do if he ever Faked the run and, and straightened up to throw it, there could be huge yardage available. <laughs> I, that's what I'm wondering is when Vic Sheely is going to choose to 
put that uh, play on display because you know he has it working. You know the teams are counting on the run. And one of these days, Blaze is going to instead move backwards and unleash a pass, and it could work out very well for the Huskies. Fourth down and a yard. The kick is away by Blake Patterson and fair caught near the 22 yard line. So Smoke Harris, who's had some nice returns, decided to hold on to that one. And Louisiana Tech, which scored on its last possession, owns the ball again with 6.23 remaining in the third quarter. It's 45 24. Bulldogs lead. This is the first time that Louisiana Tech and HPU have met on the football field. And a matchup that uh, came to pass just within the last couple of months as Louisiana Tech had to find a new FCS opponent for this season. Prairie View A&M, the Panthers were the original opponent, but the SWAC opting to postpone its season in full to the spring, whereas Southland Conference teams had the option of playing non-conference ball games this fall. HBU taking them up on that opportunity, and they'll end up playing at least four games. Vic Sheely didn't completely rule out adding a fifth and sixth, but for now, HBU content to play four, and they'll wrap up the season against Eastern Kentucky next weekend. Adrian Hardy on that last reception, a nice rollout by Anthony. He threw a strike to Hardy on the near sideline. Good for a first down up at the 42. Conference. Anthony resets Tucker to his left. Izzy's got it and runs through a huge hole. He's at midfield. He's at the 40. He's tripped up near the 25-yard line. Israel Tucker. A 5'8", 200-pound dasher runs for big yardage. He's a senior, a three-year letter winner out of Metairie. Finally able to get out in space. Previously just had a couple of attempts for three yards. This time comes up with the big gainer. Counts for 31 yards. First and 10 at the 28. They get the 27 to the ground again on a similar play. Tucker running hard, lunges forward. He wants it right now. Two nice runs in a row for Israel Tucker. <laughs> Louisiana Tech quickly comes to the line of scrimmage. Tucker gets inside the 15. He's at the 14. He's at the 13. It's a first down. They may mark him at the 14. Whistles continue to blow. Defense, a man on the field. Five yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. There were too many players on the artificial surface for Houston Baptist. You know, Chris, in, a, in addition to a world of changes, literally, in sports, a lot of the officials uh, have gone away from the traditional whistle and using a uh, automatic device. Tucker stays on his feet. He's inside the five. He's down to about the three. This will be close to a first down. There's electronic whistles where they simply have to push a button to emit that sound instead of blowing into the traditional whistle. It obviously makes a ton of sense health-wise, but it's got some negative feedback, a little harder to hear in some cases. That was a run for a first down. It was first and goal from the three. Louisiana Tech tries to punch it in from there. Clearly, they have to improve upon the electronic whistles because some injuries have occurred this year simply because players did not hear the play go dead. They continue it and Somebody else in the play did hear the whistle, and that, that can be real trouble. Justin Henderson checks into the lineup. Straight T formation behind Anthony. Henderson stutters, leaning, and is denied. 
He was pushed back just as it appeared he was going to lunge to the stripe. So third and goal from inside the one. Once again, the straight T formation. This time, the call goes to the right side. Uh-uh. The Cougars rise to the occasion and take a bite out of the ball carrier. I said Cougars. I meant Huskies <laughs> as Tucker was unable to get into the right side. Now the, the Houston Cougars have yet to get a game in this season. Four of them have all been canceled. Boy, They're it's up. been tough down in that area oh for gosh. Rice, for Houston. HBU, the only program in that city, only Division I program that has actually hit the field this year. So now it's fourth and goal from the one. And there is yet another injured player. Less than three minutes remain in the third quarter. We are delighted you have chosen to spend this Saturday night with us. 45-24, plenty of scoring and more to come. I'm not sure what the nature of this penalty is. Let's see, that looks like Smith, who made that interception in the end zone earlier in this quarter. He was down a long time, but appears to be relatively comfortable heading to the sideline. Now HBU will dig in because H Louisiana Tech will send its offense back out on the field a yard to the end zone here on fourth down. Tucker is in the game in the backfield. We'll see if he's rejoined by another tandem. They will go back to that straight T formation. Quarterback sneak and it is good. Luke Anthony following the surge of Russi and Abraham Delphin. Work it in from the one yard line. You're already up by 21 points. Maybe you think, let's just kick the, kick the extra point and get three more here. But I like this call from Skip Holtz and Joe Sloan. Punched in, you're gonna have situations like this down the line in tighter ball games where you have to muscle up and get that one yard to get hit pay dirt. Why not practice it in this game situation? Jacob Barnes splits the upright once again. 2.39 to go in the third quarter. And Louisiana Tech has exceeded half a hundred. Let's look at the quarterback plunge over the right side again. Good blocking on the right side of that line. You see Cody Russi ahead of the pack here doing his job and moving. Offensive linemen love that challenge. <laughs> and they love it even more when they look around and the quarterback is in the end zone. I come from a family of offensive linemen, and they're both watching tonight. Both fantastic back in their day at Arlington Lamar High School. And I certainly appreciate the finer things in offensive line play, given what my brothers did back in the day. And you know, always Chris, want to give you, the big men love. If you want to know about what's really happening on a football team, always no doubt. go to the offensive linemen. And they're usually the smartest guys out there, too, despite the fact that they have to knock into the defensive line <laughs> constantly and take a lot of head trauma. But uh, you're absolutely right. Cody Rusty is one of the biggest leaders on this ball club. And the offensive line for Louisiana Tech had seven returning letter winners, two returning starters in Rusty and Willie Allen. Heard well, from Russi earlier in the week, and he said these guys on this team just like to get nasty and play football like it's supposed to be played, Lynn. Houston Baptist has not run it a lot, but gets some okay yardage <laughs> on first down. Ian Beak on that carry. Second and six. Just over two minutes remain in the third quarter here in Ruston. 
Zappi calls for the football. We'll check his numbers. Add another completion as he finds Ben Ratzliff. Ratzliff has a touchdown reception tonight. Chris, let's check in on the Bailey Zappi's numbers. Zappi is now 27 Personal foul. 60 on the offense. Be 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Be first. Left guard, left guard Dan Wilkins has called for that penalty and it wipes out good yardage. The numbers for Bailey Zappi tonight, 27 completions on 43 attempts, 281 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. What's the over and under on his total number of passes tonight? I'm going to go 64, maybe 65. Still with a quarter and two minutes to play. I'll go the under. He's at how many now? 43. To add 20 more. In a quarter and a little bit more. That may be a stretch. Yeah. I'll take the under if you're offering odds. We are. We're really close to those casinos over in Bossier and Shreveport. I was thinking more along the lines of a diet soda. <laughs> Fifty-two twenty-four. Louisiana Tech, after scoring 31 against Southern Mississippi and taking a fourth down throw at the end of the game to do it, has had better success here. A nice throw across the middle into the hands of Ratzlaff again. I like the way HBU works its receivers, even though Jareth Stearns is the number one receiver in terms of the number of receptions. They'll throw it all over the place, and it's a sophisticated series of routes, not necessarily helter-skelter, but one or two guys has to do their job to set up somebody else. You know, and all week long leading up to this game, I've really been diving into coaching philosophies with the air raid and heard one podcast with a Hal Mummy uh, understudy talking about how air raid is not just an offense. It is a lifestyle. These guys just love what they do, and they love the fact that uh, they can have so much fun with this. It's obviously one of the more fun offenses to watch in all of football. I remember when Hal Mummy was developing it, and I think it was at Valdosta, but he ran the same play 16 times in a row. <laughs> well, it resulted in three or four touchdowns. Sure. Why would you change? He was part of the rebirth of the Southeastern Louisiana football program back in the day. And despite the fact that it was newly reborn, the Lions were putting up monster numbers with the air raid offense. I think this is Christian Hood at the starting center. There's been a little cornbread and sweet milk down that gullet. A freshman out of Marshall, Texas, 6'2", 300. Five pounder. That's and why when I love you, working when with you. Atlanta. When you can start <laughs> at center as a freshman, yeah, you've got to have something going for you. Oh, no doubt. And plenty, of, plenty of uh, the aforementioned treats that have uh, been slid his way across the dinner table. Second down and about seven. Less than a minute to play in the third quarter. You ever had real sweet milk? I mean, that's nearly from the cow, straight from the cow. Can't say I have. Zappi tries to get rid of it. Did he do so? Yeah, there's going to be a catch. Looked like Woods was able to get that little last second pitch. Somehow Zappi avoids the sack, and as he's going down, he just shovels it out to his tailback. Third and four from the 40. Zappi throws it quickly. That's caught for a first down with the lunge by Stearns. Or I beg your pardon. That looked like uh, another receiver Surefield, there. Sherfield, I believe, made the catch. Or Jalen Jay Woods, excuse me. Zappi on the move. Slides ahead. He's got a first down, it appears. 
That is the final play of the third quarter. We're in Ruston tonight, Louisiana Tech, 52, uh, HBU, 24. We've had 76 points scored in this game between the two teams. More to come, 52-24, Louisiana Tech leads HBU. Welcome to the fourth quarter in Ruston with Chris Mikoski. I'm Len Rollins, and HBU will keep it on the ground here on second and short, and it results in a first down as uh, Woods was able to dash through a tiny hole. Quickly, Zappi throws it on a short route to the left side. That is caught. It appears first down yardage is gained by Jareth Stearns. Jareth, the far and away, the uh, top receiver today for HBU. That's his 13th catch, now over 130 yards, and has two touchdowns. 47 has been his longest reception. He's got a Baker's dozen with 13 catches right now. First down. Inside the 10, pressure on Zappi, but he pulls away, looking, slinging, incomplete. There were two would-be receivers and three potential defenders, and Zappi threw it into that crowd, but had some mustard on it and pitched it high where only his man could get it. If Ratzlaff would have been able to high point that football and make the play, that would have been the most impressive play of the night by Zappi. Watch him spin out and deliver that ball maybe uh, six inches shorter, and that's the play of the game. Of course, wouldn't change the fact that HBU is down big, but still might be the most impressive play of the evening. Second and goal, Zappi avoids defensive pressure, running inside the five, lunging to the pylon. Just short. And he was knocked out of bounds near the two-yard line. It appeared he might have gotten a little farther than that, but they will spot it near the two, maybe the one and a half. Zappy. He's coming into your living rooms right now. Zappi, career-wise, has all of HBU's all-time records when it comes to passing yards, completions, passing touchdowns, but he's also he also has the third most carries in program history. That's one record he might not be able to break. He's 119 behind B.J. Kelly. Zappi throws it inside. Touchdown! The catch made by Ratzlaff. One-on-one -on -one isolation and Ratzlaff ran a, a route that's very difficult to defend. His second touchdown catch of the night is eighth reception. And so here comes HPU again. Ratzlaff now with 77 yards receiving, creeping up on potentially his seventh 100-yard receiving game in his HBU career. The extra point is good. It's 52-31. Louisiana Tech leads HBU. More football and more changing of the scoreboard coming your way when we come back. We welcome you back to Ruston, Louisiana. Houston Baptist getting the latest score, but Louisiana Tech leads 52-31. That ball was thrown exactly where it needed to be into the hands of Ben Ratzlaff. And a short kick and a sliding reception made by Louisiana Tech at about the 40. That could have been dangerous. It could have been. I, just after that touchdown catch from Ratzlaff, you know, HBU continues to stay in this ball game. But the biggest takeaway, considering what HBU was able to do against Texas Tech and stay, again, within two points of them at the end of this game, I think this night speaks really, really well to Louisiana Tech, both on the offensive and defensive side. David Blackwell, the new defensive coordinator, for Louisiana Tech, able to scheme against this HBU air raid offense and get ready for some tougher opponents coming up down the line here after claiming a victory against HBU if they can hold on for the next 13 minutes and 25 seconds. And the handoff goes to Izzy Tucker, Israel. 
fighting for some tough yardage, gains about eight. That'll put him two yards short of the midfield. Aaron Allen back under center for Louisiana Tech. The sophomore out of Missouri City, Texas, played briefly in the first half. And Talk once again, we've got an injured player. We talked to Luke Anthony earlier in the week, Lynn, and just talking about his relationship with Aaron Allen. It's a unique situation for both of them. We'll talk more about that relationship. We are back to play. Allen fires it down the middle in between the hash marks. And with good defense, that ball is broken up. Before the break, I started talking about Luke Anthony's comments on his relationship with Aaron Allen. Luke hadn't been in a quarterback competition for a while. He had been embedded as the starter for Abilene Christian the last few years, including two years of being the captain. An outstanding career there at the FCS level and now getting his chance to compete at the F on the FBS level with Louisiana Tech. But at first, Luke and Aaron had to feel each other out. They're both competitive guys. They didn't want to get too close because they were both fighting for the same job and really didn't know anything about each other. But now Luke sees how driven Aaron is, how hard he works, and how good a quarterback he, he can become. And I think that relationship will just continue to thrive throughout the course of this season. This is a fourth down play with a yard to go. Aaron Allen ran up under center at the last moment and just barely gets enough to sustain the drive. So Louisiana Tech going for it on fourth down. Bulldogs are two for two tonight. The throw goes to the outside. The reception made on the numbers. And some yardage turned in by Smoke Harris. Both of these teams have receivers who would not have been able to excel in another era of football. They are small. They're darters. They're tough. They're low to the ground. They're elusive. But they're not that classic 6'2", 6'3", guy who... Uh, was rangy and that sort of thing, but uh, it's a new era of offense, and guys who are well under six feet and well under 200 pounds can have a huge impact on a game. Well, and some of those players you're describing, those attributes, they might not be available to a program like Louisiana Tech. You have to work with the men that you can get into your program, and you build the offense around the personnel. And Greg, Louisiana Tech's done a fantastic job with that. Greg Garner on that carry, he had a big fourth quarter last week and was a real factor in the come from behind victory third and five from the 30 from the 45 the line to make is the 40 Aaron Allen works with an empty backfield three receivers to the left of the formation two to the right Allen looks, throws over the middle on the slant. Caught for the first down. Smoke Harris ran the inside slant, and the ball was right on his numerals from Aaron Allen. Allen taking advantage of the opportunity for some additional playing time in a tighter ball game. We may still see Luke Anthony out there, but Skip Holtz did promise that they would rotate in. Maybe this wasn't the original game plan after Luke obviously had the hot hand early on, but no reason to not let Allen get some reps here late. First and 10 from the 36. Allen scrambles to his left. He's got choices. He heaves it deep. It's overthrown. It's intercepted, and there is a flag down. I believe Trey that was a push off. Yeah, Flewellen. Pushed off to Louisiana Tech receiver in question. I believe it was Tucson down that way. Trey Flewellen, a sophomore from Gilmer, Texas, made the interception, but there was a, an immediate handkerchief thrown on the field. Pass interference, defense number 17. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. 
automatic first down. So Flewellen indeed is flagged. Another 15-yard penalty, and there have been a numerous amounts of those against uh, HBU tonight. Flewellen, the sophomore, and really one of the more elder statesmen in this defensive secondary for HBU. You look at Wolf, Cash. Well, Camp Hargrove and Cash, all freshmen. Freshmen, they were in the lineup in the nickel package last week. From the 21, a reset of the down marker. Allen has time. Shuffles to his left. Now we'll keep it. Fakes a man. Works to the 10. Works to the 5. Jukes again. And he's knocked down. A shifty little run by Aaron Allen. A very patient run. You see a very frustrated Brennan Young down there that he was not able to wrap up against Allen. So he's tracking him right there, number 42 in white, right there. But Allen, one little juke move and gets blows right past Young and gets an additional five or six yards. So first and goal from the five. Allen gives it to Garner, and he pushes the pile to the two, perhaps. We'll see where they mark it. Greg Garner, a transfer from Cisco College, a junior out of Euless, Texas, a six-foot, 205-pound running back. He takes on the linebacker, Caleb Johnson. Second and goal. A dive to the end zone. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. It is Greg Garner scoring for the Bulldogs. Number 25 goes airborne. And Louisiana Tech is looking for its 59th point. Reeves Blankenship will snap it. Noah White holds it. And it's kicked through by Jacob Barnes. That trio has been perfect this year in place kicking. 59-31, Louisiana Tech. Welcome back, everyone. We roll on in the fourth quarter, 8.52 to go in Ruston, Louisiana tonight at beautiful Joe I.A. Stadium on the campus of Louisiana Tech. Skip Holtz, as head coach here, has lost only once in a home season opener. And the Bulldogs have been pretty darn good over the course of their long football history. 80 victories, 31 losses, five ties, all time in home openers. Skip Holt six and one in his seven years now plus at uh, Louisiana Tech. That lone loss in a home opener in the Skip Holtz era, I'm sure you remember it well. Let's check the play here. There will be a return. But an ill-advised decision as Louisiana Tech has covered kicks pretty darn well most of the time. It was your alma mater that pulled off that uh, one win in a home opener for Louisiana Tech. Northwestern uh, State a few yep, years ago. 2014 on a, as a, on a field goal as time expired. And certainly a crushing loss for Louisiana Tech, but they haven't had many downtime since then. It's been fantastic seasons, a run of success here. Again, Louisiana Tech trying to go to its seventh consecutive bowl game and pick up its seventh consecutive bowl victory in this 2020 season. You know, that rolls off the tongue rather easily, but when you consider there's only a, a meager handful of teams across the country that have won six or more consecutive bowl games, only 10. it really says a lot for this Louisiana Tech program to not only finish strong, but to take each bowl opportunity very seriously. Yeah, that only 10 programs in FBS history have ever won six or more consecutive bowl games. And the most important note in that is that Tech is the only one outside of the Power Five conferences to accomplish that. 
So sights on seven the mantra for this year. And Tech's That's gone to had a lot of great destinations over the course of that run. They've had some success in the Dallas Fort Worth area winning the Heart of Dallas Bowl the Armed Forces Bowl and the Frisco Bowl. The only DFW Bowl they haven't been able to attend yet is the Cotton. They also got to go to Hawaii one year. And last year, a quasi home game going down to Independence Stadium for the Independence Bowl against the Miami Hurricanes. Zappi has a lot of time to survey the field. Now we'll have to take three or four yards on the keeper. And you know, Chris, that was a shutout victory against Miami. Mm -hmm. Shutouts in postseason in bowl games are very rare. What was the only one in, F in the FBS postseason last year? What Louisiana Tech was able to accomplish. And we all know that the makeup of rosters changes drastically between the end of the regular season and the postseason. Miami was losing, was down a lot of guys who decided to declare early for the NFL draft. Amik Robertson was off the Louisiana Tech roster, and that is a long completion there for HBU. Zappi finds an open receiver, and this is all the way inside the 15-yard line as Zappi had a chance to survey the field. And Ratzlaff was working well behind the secondary, a broken coverage there. Zappi almost did a double take when he saw his receiver that far open beyond the secondary. He looks, he can run it, he can throw it, he does the ladder, it's incomplete. Let's go back and look at uh, the completion of Ratzlaff who was well behind the Louisiana Tech secondary. Another look at it here, plenty of time pointing to his receiver exactly where he wanted him placed. Big game for HBU, and until the clock reaches all zeros, they are certainly not going to hit the off switch. Six minutes and some change here in the fourth quarter remains. Zappi stands, fires, broken up. Zappi tried to thread that one through to Jalen Johnson, a junior out of Spring, Texas. You know, we, we've I'm talked about some of the great football names in Texas. How about some of the cities there as you see good good play in front of the uh, intended receiver. Some of the that was uh, Ladler who broke that up. One of my favorite Texas City names Chris is Lick Skillet Texas. <laughs> That's close to Nacogdoches. Zappi rolling left throws to the corner incomplete. You know, you just figure in Lick Skillet, Texas, there's got to be a family-owned diner that's been around sure. for 80 or 90 years and serves a lot of good food. TCU and SMU normally play for the Iron Skillet trophy. We'll see if they get that game rescheduled this year. Fourth down here. Zappi keeps one protector in the backfield. He throws. Caught at the two. This is going to extend the drive. A well-delivered throw right into the hands of Ben Ratzlaff. That may have been the most velocity we've seen from a Zappi throw tonight. And he had to have it. He'll sling it to the left side again. There's a dive. The pylon is rattled, and it's a touchdown by Jarrett Stearns. Jarrett Stearns did the little out pattern, not only, not, but about a two or three step pattern, and then dived it to the end zone. And he is there to give the 37th point to Houston Baptist. So HBU looking for point number 38. Would still trail by 21. But you've got to give this Southland Conference team a boatload of credit tonight. All year long. 
They've, they've come out fighting and they have never shied away from a challenge. They have stepped up to every single one of them, all three FBS opponents they've seen. The extra point is good. 59-38, Bulldogs. We promised you a lot of points before the start of this game. Promise kept, 59-38. Louisiana Tech is leading even with that last touchdown pass to Jareth Stearns from Bailey Zappi. The return from the 20. Out to about the 36, maybe the 37 yard line. Louisiana Tech will have a short week and will head to BYU for a Friday night game televised on ESPN2. So not only fewer days between games, but also the travel to Utah for the Bulldogs. Isaiah Graham on that return. The Bulldogs with some nice starting position at the 38-yard line. BYU taking on Troy tonight. They are just underway in Provo. You can find that one tonight on ESPN. If you'd like to scout the next Bulldog opponent. We'll step aside here as Louisiana Tech takes a timeout. Five minutes and 35 seconds to go here in Ruston. 59-38, Louisiana Tech leads HBU. Football tonight for the first time this year from Ruston, Louisiana. 59-38, Louisiana Tech out in front with the football at their own 38-yard line. Aaron Allen will accept the snap. He resets Greg Garner. Garner. Looking for yardage up the middle, doesn't find any. You know, Chris, we're in Lincoln Parish tonight, and this is a part of the country that has put many, many, many athletes and coaches and other sports dignitaries in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Outside of the New Orleans and Baton Rouge area, easily Lincoln Parish has had more representatives in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, a beautiful building in Natchitoches, Louisiana. And uh, the numbers keep coming from Louisiana Tech primarily, also some from Grambling, of course. And it's, uh, it, it's really, really impressive over the course of the last many decades, the, the number of Louisiana Sports Hall of Famers there are from Lincoln Parish. I was actually just on the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame website this week looking up information about your induction. Wanted to link to that after you appeared on my podcast, Group of Five Live. I enjoy doing that. Greg Garner on the receiving end, and he lowers his shoulder and makes a few people pay on the tackling side of it. A first down, watch this effort by Garner after the short reception. We do that uh, show every Monday to wrap up the weekend that was, and then every Friday to preview the upcoming weekend. It's been a lot of fun, a new addition to my schedule this year, part of Landry's football conference call, wherever you find podcasts, going over all the group of five action. There is a late flag thrown after the reception and an injured Husky. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number nine. 15 penalty from the end of the run. Chris, there have been at least three and maybe four face mask penalties against the uh, Huskies. That have, latest one against the linebacker, that, Caleb Johnson. The induction celebration coming up in Natchitoches for Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame on the weekend of December 15th through the 17th. And 
Among those in this year's class is Angela Turner, the former Lady Texter basketball great. Also and it see looks like we've got a new quarterback. Looks like Desmond Young is in for, oh, I beg your pardon, it looks like uh, Weston Elliott is in for Louisiana Tech. We'll check that. I think you got it right. Weston Elliott, the third quarterback of the night for the Bulldogs, sporting number 10 on his royal blue jersey. So he's playing for the first time. I know you've been a big part of that Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame ceremony for a lot of years, and it'll be a star-studded class this December. Garner, right between the hash marks, will give Louisiana Tech an opportunity with first and goal. Nick Saban among the inductees this year, Charles Tillman, Phil Robertson, in the world of broadcasting, Tim Brando will be inducted this year. The ULM grad. But the most high profile inductee of all this December, Lynn, Kent Lowe going into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. How about that? Longtime sports information director at Louisiana Tech. And speaking of longtime contributors to Louisiana sports, how about Louisiana Tech's own Dave Nitz, who was inducted last year. He's been at the microphone on the radio for four and a half decades it's here at uh, in Ruston at Louisiana Tech. I hate that uh, in these times where we really just can't sit and talk uh, freely a whole lot, we really have to report to our station here in the press box and and stay put. Didn't get to visit a ton with Dave tonight. Went in and gave him and Teddy Allen a quick hello in the Louisiana Tech radio booth. But you know, Dave Nitz is, he defined, it's the word legend defined. The throw to the corner, is it caught? Yes, it is. Touchdown! Let's see, that's Maxwell, a heck of a grab and a beautiful throw by the young quarterback. A big moment for those two. The freshman out of A-Meets coming down with a touchdown grab and etching his name into the Louisiana Tech records forever. Red shirt freshman. So how about Desmond Young to that rookie for the touchdown. Well done, young men. Reeves Blankenship sends it to the holder. Noah White and Jacob Barnes remains perfect in place kicking. The throw is right where it needs to be. Look at the outstretched hands for the catch and the little toe tap before you get out of the end zone. We've seen some good toe tapping out of Louisiana Tech over the past couple of weeks, Lynn. How about that? Griffin Bear with the game winner getting that toe in bounds. He talked to us this week about how they go through those toe tapping drills and pan are they paying off? A little boot scoot boogie right there. <laughs> right, right here in the boot of Louisiana. Absolutely. But what a, a fantastic week this must have been for this Louisiana Tech program to really feel like everything is somewhat normal. They were actually able to go through a full week of padded practice as they're, as they're used to doing. This is opposed to last week where Skip Holt said walking into that game against Southern Miss that he felt as ill prepared as he ever has in his career taking a team into a ball game. Just so strange from a preparation standpoint. A week after, of course, they had to have a game against Baylor canceled because 36 players in the program tested positive for COVID-19. And after Hurricane Laura came through, they just had to do whatever they could to find a place to stay. They weren't able to really stay contained and stay as disciplined in their actions. They just had to find a way to make it through that time. What was so disappointing for the Bulldogs was that in the previous three or four weeks, they had had two cases, mm -hmm. two. Yep. And then the hurricane destroyed all of that that uh, previous work to stay healthy. And, and Skip 
to his point, was telling us this week that he really still doesn't even know how they got that game in. I mean, that he was fully expecting on Friday to have to call it off, to have to call Conference USA and say, we simply can't do it. But they were able to get enough players in position to make it to Hattiesburg, to play a football game, and then to come out with a victory in that dramatic fashion. And now tonight, they'll be 2-0 and and looking to make a big statement next week in Provo. New quarterback for Houston Baptist, Blaze Benson. We saw a little bit of him earlier in the game, simply running some dive plays, but getting some more action here to open up the playbook. Benson, that 6'5", 225 frame. Ladarius used... Turner on the past two carries. He's uh, in the game for the first time. Benson used that frame for a different sport to a lot of success last year in high school playing for Sherman north of Dallas, really up towards the Oklahoma border. Turner Won the state with championship in soccer as a goaltender, Lynn. Now that's an unusual combination. Goalkeeper to quarterback. Ladarius Turner with three consecutive carries and some good output. And that is the end of the game. As Houston Baptist for the first time hooks up with Louisiana Tech. And the Bulldogs score 66, they give up 38, and they get the victory tonight as football returns to Ruston, Louisiana for the first time this year. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. Louisiana Tech gets the win, 66-38. So that's the story, a successful opener for the Bulldogs in Ruston. For Chris Mikoski, I'm Lynn Rollins. So long from Ruston, Louisiana. The final score, Louisiana Tech 66, HPU 38. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.